Big Brother, mainstream media, government cover-ups. You want answers? Well, so does he. He's Alex Jones on the GCN Radio Network. And now, live from Austin, Texas, Alex Jones. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for joining us. Very tragic events have taken place in Charleston on the East Coast. A deranged, classically mentally ill-looking young man has bust into a church last night and basically sat there for an hour before shooting and killing execution style nine black people on a white on black racial attack. And this is one of these events that I call a Rosetta Stone. There are a lot of them that are. But you can take this event and look at every angle of our problems through it and learn a lot. Number one, I don't mean this sarcastically, Dylan Roof, who's now in police custody, who walked around and, and posted to Facebook and places himself wearing you know, South African apartheid attire and patches, should have gone and gotten a job at Planned Parenthood or gone to medical school to be an abortionist, and then he could kill tens of thousands of black people in his career and be called a great member of society. And that's what the smart racists do. That's why myself and Jakari Jackson and others have gone out and demonstrated and protested out front Planned Parenthood here in Austin, Texas, and a bunch of death-loving scum, spiritual kindreds, I would say, in my opinion, crawl out from underneath rocks to come and attack us. And it's meant to inflame emotions. It's meant to create hysteria and fear. Some will say, is it a false flag? Well, because our government and other governments have been caught carrying out mass shooting false flags, and because it's in Operation Northwoods, that they would wound people and shoot people at public places and then blame it on their political enemies as a pretext for war with Cuba. Because this happened in Operation Gladio, back in the 1950s and 60s and 70s in Europe, you have to say we have to look at that. I don't think that's what this is. It could be. But we've seen other demons target white churches, black churches, Jewish synagogues. It was a famous case back in the late 90s in uh, Fort Worth where a guy went in and shot and killed 14 people. Uh, mainly a white church. It was a white guy doing it. He was a Navy veteran. And then it turned out he told his neighbors he was under mind control. And I thought, oh, probably schizophrenic. Till they talked to one neighbor and they said, no, we saw him one day being drug out by people in what looked like Navy uniforms and thrown in a white van. This is decades after he'd been in the Navy. You, you can look up that case. Buford Furrow, a white supremacist attacker of a Jewish day school, lived at an Air Force base in Oregon, if you look it up, and had national security connected emails. Take the theater shooting. That's a false flag. Was the shooter the actual shooter? We don't know, but he didn't know who he was and had been drugged up and told police and told people in next to his jail cell, I'm under mind control. I'm in a secret government program. And guess what? He was in a secret government program with computer brain interface, and his dad was in highest level secret government operations. And then they had a top government psychiatrist who'd run the entire Air Force base again, in San Antonio, the entire complex of Air Force bases, this lady was the head of it. She goes two years before this happens and is at the college that the Batman shooter is at and basically takes a special interest in him and he meets with her up to five times a week. And it just goes on from there. I mean, the police reports on Sirhan Sirhan on the JFK shooting that said he didn't do the shooting and he'd been drugged. So this could be what's happening. I got up at 5.30 in the morning 
went in, had some coffee, got on the elliptical, turned on the television, and I saw the headlines, white man kills nine at black church. Dylan Roof, the alleged gunman, has now been captured 200 plus miles away. This, just the last 45 minutes. Charleston shooting suspect Dylan Roof, 21, apprehended. He had drug charges currently against him of a controlled substance. He'd been in and out of trouble, trespassing and other activities. And he just looks like the textbook case lunatic. And let me tell you, if I had a son like that, I would not be giving him a gun. But that's just common sense. There are so many angles to this tragedy. How the media is handling it. How they're building towards a race war this summer. How the answer is to arm every institution or organization that has been seen as a soft target in the past. He didn't go out looking for people in their neighborhoods because he knew they'd have guns. He went to where he knew he'd find black people who didn't have guns so the coward, if the official story's true, could have his way with them and reload repeatedly and then leave one person alive so they could tell the story. I don't know if this official story's true. And the media will attack me, I predict by tonight, for saying I don't know if it's true. His M.O. fits the type of person that would do something like this. This has gone on before. But because of Operation Gladio that was carried out, hundreds of operations in Europe from the 50s to the 80s, staging terror attacks to blame political opposition, left or right, NATO would stage a terror attack if a conservative group got too powerful or if a liberal group got too powerful or if a communist group got too powerful. It's been declassified by the Italian Supreme Court, partially by the U.S. government, that they blew up trains, did mass shootings, shot up churches, you name it. By the way, did you hear 10 were shot, 10 white people were shot and killed by five black gunmen? Of course, that was in 1993 when apartheid was ending, and then it came out in the news later that it had been organized and probably paid for by groups that wanted to keep apartheid in place. So there's the London Telegraph reporting on what many believe is a false flag. In 1993, Monday, the 26th of July, 10 shot dead in Cape Town Church. Black gunmen opened fire on congregation in an attack likely to undermine negotiations in South Africa. Think so? But I want to be clear here. My gut has never been wrong. And it's not really my gut. It's, it, it's, it's, it's the way this was reported, the way it broke, the way it's being handled, the way they didn't have scripts right up front, because I've been watching this pretty much since it was being reported on the news because I woke up early this morning, a little bit earlier than usual. And bare minimum, they uh, th this guy was involved somehow. His MO fits it. That's what my gut tells me because the media wasn't ready, wasn't all over this, didn't have it all greased like 9-11 or Sandy Hook or the Batman shooting in Aurora, Colorado. And I'm not going to go back over those, but Aurora is cut and dry drugging. Just like Sirhan Sirhan is in the LAPD declassified report, what, 15 years ago, that the police say he has been drugged, his hand was pinned, Sirhan Sirhan, he never shot RFK. Robert F. Kennedy was shot repeatedly in the back at point-blank range with big burn holes in his sports jacket, and he was shot by a literal CIA spook on CIA payroll from the Skunk Works. The Skunk Works provided security that day. You know, out on the West Coast, that's where they had the SR-71 Blackbird and other secret aircraft at the time. A guy from a spy plane facility came out to help, and boy, did he. So let's be clear, these things have been staged before, and what you do is you just drug somebody up 
and then they don't remember what happens, and you set them up. We've got to hear from these witnesses. We've got to see what unfolds there. A five-year-old that survived by playing dead and one person that the alleged killer kept alive to, quote, tell the story. But regardless, the mainstream media hyping racial division and race war in this country 24-7 and creating the perception that blacks are being targeted by white people everywhere for extermination has elicited a lot of low-intensity attacks on whites that, quite frankly, I see almost every day and don't even cover. Not that I'm covering up that whites are being targeted. I'll just mention, hey, there are attacks on whites. They're intensifying. Here's the crime statistics. It's very sad. This is being hyped. They want to get a race war going. Whites will start responding. Mentally ill criminal types. And then it could build towards a crescendo. And you see George Soros and the media pushing for this to federalize police after a summer of rage coming up this summer. This is it. This is the big one. With Obama with a year and a half left to try to ram through a bunch of federalization, gun control, you name it, they don't need to stage attacks because you've got 330 million people roughly in this country. It's a powder keg. So those are just some of the angles here. He's been apprehended. Who knows how obvious this will get if it is some type of staged event. And it could be. I'm not saying it's a staged event, but our government and criminal elements have done things like this before. The pastor was a state senator. For 14 years, the pastor killed in Charleston. So it's very, 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 very suspicious that this is the particular place that was targeted. And I will say the whole thing smells, but... The media wasn't ready with their talking points, so that leans towards it not being a false flag. Again, if you just joined us, there's an article from the Daily Beast. Everything known about Charleston shooting suspect Dylan Roof, the man accused of killing nine inside a black church, wore pro-apartheid flags, held strong conservative beliefs. Notice they keep saying that conservatives are going to start mass shooting churches and malls and, and notice it's starting. And if you hype that enough and put that narrative out, enough TV shows and movies, not just in nonfiction, but in fiction, you're going to have mentally ill people that are going to say, hey, I'm not going to commit suicide by cop. I'm going to go out and kill a bunch of people. And then undoubtedly, there's going to be people running frame-up jobs, false flags against their own churches, burning them down for insurance money, burning crosses in front of them, shooting up their own churches. When you study the criminology, this always happens to get attention. The media will fan the flames of that, and then that will probably cause some real crazies to actually go out and do something as well and really get the ball rolling. Because they don't want civil unrest about the economy being shut down or about inequity and the globalist and the TPP and all these other big things that we're fighting right now. They want to change the narrative to whites and blacks fighting with each other. Police say they have arrested Dylan Storm Roof. This family needs to be looked into. The suspected killer of nine people at a historic black church in Charleston, Roof 21 is from Lexington, South Carolina, and has been taken into custody in Shelby County, North Carolina. At a press conference, we're going to get Reverend Childress on today about this from all Black Lives Matter. At a press conference, police chief Greg Mullen said a citizen tip led police to his car. He would not comment further on whether weapons were found in the vehicle, but said Roof was cooperative. Mullen refused to comment on Roof admitting to the shooting. He was previously arrested on April 26 on a trespassing charge and was awaiting 
moderation. Roof was also recently arrested on possession of a controlled substance. And again, earlier I was talking about mind control with Sirhan Sirhan and the police report, drug, didn't shoot RFK, other events, so many of these shooters. And it made me think of McVeigh. The state police found him foaming at the mouth. That was in the report, slobbering, saying, I've got a chip. It hurts. Get it out. Get it out. Crawling around on the ground. Obviously mind control. He was set up. That's what they do. They give you an amnesic, some trigger word, if you've already been programmed. I mean, this is was declassified in the 70s by Frank Church and the Church Committee in the Senate. MK Ultra, MK Naomi, and others. It's way more advanced than that. You want to see what it's like? Denzel Washington's remake of the Manchurian, of the Manchurian Candidate is dead on. Dead on. Dead on. That's exactly how this works. But they don't even do that. They can just get you in with a psychiatrist when you're already in the system, get you on some drugs. They monitor you. They decide you're the right candidate. You're handed off to a handler. They drug you up for the event. Then tell you run after you wake up. You don't know what happened. And then you end up going to a supermax prison, never to talk to the media again in case you ever piece it all together. I'm not saying that happened, but it's real. We don't have all the facts, but we do know that, once again, innocent people were killed in part because someone who wanted to inflict harm had no trouble getting their hands on a gun. Now is the time for mourning and for healing. But let's be clear. At some point, we as a country will have to reckon with the fact that this type of mass violence does not happen in other advanced countries. It doesn't happen it's not in true. other places with this kind of frequency. Nope, not with guns, but with baseball bats and knives, higher. And it is in our power to do something about it. England has three times the violent crime rate in the U.S. I say that recognizing the politics in this town uh, foreclose a lot of those avenues right now. This is live. But it'd be wrong for us not to acknowledge it. Within hours of it happening and at some nine point dead. The president is out addressing it to, to hype it. Come to grips with it. Yeah, come to grips. With you giving Trust weapons to Al-Qaeda in, in, in Libya and Syria and Egypt to kill hundreds of thousands. The issue of gun violence collectively. And, and missiles to them. The fact that uh, this took place uh, in a black church uh, obviously also raises questions about a dark part of our history. Uh, this is not the first time that black churches have been attacked. And we know that hatred across uh, races and faiths pose a particular threat to our democracy and our ideals. Uh, the good news is I am confident that uh, the Folks, this is it. They've been hyping race war, pushing it as hard as they can, saying the NRA is the new KKK, even though the NRA was founded in part 50-50, to arm blacks in the South who were being disarmed. In fact, there were calls by liberal groups to disarm whites particularly today. And I just want to point out that that's been done before, but to blacks. In the South, the first gun laws were against blacks. And then when blacks migrated north to Chicago, New York, and D.C., they passed the most draconian laws in the country to disarm blacks. And that's why what you've got, last number I saw was 14 blacks a week are being shot almost exclusively by other blacks and killed in Chicago. You're not going to see a press conference from the president on that or on the 51% of blacks that were never born. You're going to hear them now say gun ownership, as Michael Moore has been saying, gun ownership is about racist white people. And you go, that doesn't make sense. What's it do with race? They're going to push it now. You see, it's not about the, the killer, the alleged killer, killing people whether you'd used a bomb or a truck or whatever. No, it's the gun did it. And if you've got guns, you want to kill black people. No, the answer is, if I was a black senator especially, or a senator, period, and I gave speeches in public, you better bet your bottom dollar I'd be carrying a concealed handgun. But see, folks don't carry their guns to church, and they should. Let's go back to the president.
Can't believe I'm saying he's the president, the traitor in chief. Members of their own communities. But to all in need, they opened their doors to strangers who might enter a church in search of healing or redemption. Mother Emanuel Church and his congregation have risen before. He is so upset right now. He cares so an much earthquake, about black people. Mother Dark Times. That's why they've to doubled the unemployment rate of blacks in seven years. And with our prayers and our love and the buoyancy of hope, it will rise again now as a place of peace. See, they can Thank take you. this event just like a shark attack, super rare, but when it happens, it's huge news, and they can hype it, and then you can bet your bottom dollar there will be other racist, crazy people that will go out and attack blacks now, and vice versa. Racist, crazy black people will go out and do the same thing. And we just barrel towards the summer with every historical analyst, financial analyst, cultural analyst saying this summer is going to be explosive, probably going to have a race war. Matt Drudge said we could see the fall of America. America is being set up for a fall, and out of that, the new socialist nightmare. And again, George Soros financed right-wingers that had a beef with the Russian groups, and, and some of them were legitimate beefs on both sides, to then bring that country down, and now look where they are, basically in flames, and in a major depression, being financially looted. And George Soros is in there funding this whole Black Lives Matter situation, to get it going and, and, and pointing out a lot of real things that are wrong and are happening, police brutality, you name it, towards this cultural crisis that they will then hold the whole country hostage with to accept tyranny. Remember what Al Sharpton said, we need to federalize all the police. We'll be back with the latest on the Charlton shooting because this, this shows you where we're going. The globalists are conquering the whole planet right now. They are announcing in Europe they're going to start freezing the general population's bank accounts and not allowing you to take out your deposits. That's mainstream news. They're announcing all over the world forced inoculations to begin outside of law. They are announcing planetary carbon taxes. Planetary government is being promoted by the Pope. And you'd think the number one story in the world is the tragic cold-blooded murder of nine black people in Charleston. Stalin said one man dies is a tragedy, 10,000 die, it's a statistic. And it's true. How, how many is it? How many black abortions? 14 million? 15 million? People don't care that were black children. Innocent. Cold-blooded murder, chopped up. But we're not supposed to care about that. We're supposed to get upset only when Obama comes out and says we should get upset. And only when the police come out and say this is tragic and cold-blooded and horrible. And, and, and I get why they said that. But when illegal aliens murder and kill on a daily basis, it's kept out of the news because it's politically incorrect to point out that's going on. And they mainly kill other Hispanics. So the media decides when to hype something up. If two guys break out of prison, they have half a state manhunt, martial law in multiple towns, searching every house at gunpoint, just like Boston. It's a big story. You let 36,000 violent illegal aliens with felonies out, it's no big deal. Don't even deport them. Nine black people are killed, and they wrenchingly break down every single angle of it. Rubbing salt in the wound with this whole background that there's this war on black people. And there is, through abortion, through socialism through dependency, through weaponization of hip-hop, through the media. But see, never look at the real attack. Forget 14, 15 million dead blacks, nine dead black people 
We've got to get the church as a country together to call for restricting the Second Amendment because the Second Amendment is racist. The NRA is the new KKK. These are the talking points you've heard for years, and now you see the plan to get the guns unfolding. I'll guarantee you, if I was a senator that gave public speaking engagements, I would have bodyguards, and I would be packing a gun. And if this guy really did it, which he may have, this 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 alleged coward, he went to where he thought there'd be disarmed people in a church, in a school, at a convention center. I've told you, churches, schools, that's where the shooters are going to target. But see, if they have ISIS hit, people will say, why'd you leave the border open? Why'd you fund ISIS? So instead, oh, this convenient person pops up. Is he mind control like Sirhan Sirhan? I don't know. Or like the Batman shooter? If, if it comes out he's being handled by an Air Force psychiatrist and was in a DARPA brain interface program and told people in the jail he's under mind control and woke up in a car somewhere like McVeigh, then I'll say might be a false flag. Right now, too early to tell. And the way the media kind of was flat-footed at first means they weren't all ready to go with this. But they're still not wasting time, and Obama's now out setting the narrative. You know, we need to grieve. We need to investigate, but this is guns. It's see, and this is racism, merging the two together to now make it cultural that guns are racist. Let me explain something. Can we bring the Barrett fifty cows in here if Weldon can get those? You know, one is brown and the other is black. So see, I discriminate when it comes to guns. I like them. I like them black. I like them brown, or I like them green, like the Incredible Hulk. I don't like shiny chrome ones, and I've even seen, like, for, I guess, no warfare, they've got white bodies that go on guns. You know, I'm kind of discriminatory. I don't like white guns. <laughs> but I'll assure you, my Barrett 50 caliber rifles have never been used in any murders, period. No, not mine. The 50 cal itself has never been used in a murder. It's been used in one crime. And there are hundreds of thousands of the Barrett alone in circulation in the U.S. In fact, it was 50 caliber rifles that the SWAT team in Dallas used, or a suburb did, to stop that armored vehicle last weekend. We're 330 million people. There's going to be shootings. There's going to be car wrecks. There's going to be shark attacks. There's going to be bee attacks. There's going to be deer jumping out in front of your car. People die. Things happen. Anyone that sells the idea that they can take your freedom to keep you safe wants to enslave you, period. So is it a false flag? I don't know. Are they pushing to destroy the Second Amendment with this? You bet. Are they building and hyping civil unrest and a war against local government so the feds can come in to federalize as the peacekeeper and conquer the states this summer? Absolutely. Absolutely. In fact, can you guys cue up Al Sharpton from a month ago saying we need to federalize all the police? Well, the Fed itself has been captured, and then it's game over. And then the Feds can direct the local police to persecute you for your political beliefs. And that'll magnify the corruption of the Justice Department hundreds of times. Here is Al Sharpton, in case you're wondering what the motive is. Disarming the public, federalizing local government, here it is. We've been fighting them all over the country, which is why we're going to do this march from here to uh, Washington. We need the Justice Department to step in and take over police in this country. In the 20th century, they had to fight states' rights and to get the right to vote. We're going to have to fight states' rights in terms of closing down police cases. Police must be held accountable. I don't think all police are bad. I don't even think most are bad. But those that are need to be held accountable. And the answer is federalizing them. It's always the answer. As if the feds aren't corrupt, as if they don't persecute people, as if there aren't bad groups in there. I mean, at the top, it's completely corrupt. My God, they ran fast and furious. I forgot about Sirhan. Sirhan being a false flag with, J with uh, JFK's brother, RFK. The Batman shooting, clearly staged. McVeigh, clearly drugged. I mean, that was in the, the Oklahoma newspaper.
That was on the national news that McVeigh was crawling around the ground, foaming at the mouth, drugged. Look it up. Saying to the state police, I've got a chip, it burns, get it out. And then weird medical procedures were done once he got to the prison. And then they had Jolly and West, the number two most famous mind control doctor in U.S. history, the protege of Dr. Ewing Cameron, who ran Project MK Ultra with kidnapped school children. That's on History Channel. Over 5,000 school children were kidnapped and taken to CIA facilities in Toronto by Dr. Ewing Cameron, who was able to program them into new identities and to basically work as government delivery agents with multiple personalities to have a, a one personality that would deliver a message and another personality that was dominant. And they had them as sex slaves, Project Monarch. I'm not making this up. Look it up. But I'd forgotten all the other cases. Another one was just popping in my head where it was mind control. This guy looks like mind control, but he may have been culturally mind controlled. His statements were reportedly black people are taking over and taking over our women. No, actually, black people's population is not growing. And black people are a test model for destroying everybody and are, are just in absolute hell with their unemployment doubled and, and, and just, just under total attack. Contrary to what, if he is some cornball, you know, racist uh, idiot, loser, who was brought up. To, I, mean, I, I mean, obviously, he was mad. He's 21. You think this guy could get a girlfriend? So then he got upset, if he really is organic attacker, and went out because he thought somebody was, quote, getting his women. Spoken like someone that can't get any women. I can't get any women because of the black people. No, you can't get any women because you're a freak. If you really did this. But he's got the thousand-yard stare of somebody who's been mind-controlled. David Knight's coming in in the next segment to break down the 10 white people that were shot and killed out of 40 plus that were shot. A story you probably never heard about and how it turned out that I remember at the time it came out on the news, you know, that a lot of folks said that the pro apartheid people had actually hired contractors and mercenaries to do it because it turned out some of the shooters were white and they never really got to the bottom of it. And that, of course, was to stop apartheid being banned is to kill a bunch of white people so is it a false flag i don't know we're going to be investigating it paul watson has an investigative report on infowars.com charlton shooting what they're not telling you he just filed this report at infowars.com again the suspect is in custody theodore kaczynski la times Alexander Cockburn was the writer. It was declassified that he was in Project MK Ultra for 30 years. And now he's in a Supermax in Colorado and never even gets to see the sky and doesn't get to talk to anybody. The Department of Justice decides that prisoners can talk to people. And guess what? He can't talk to anybody. We're going to skip this network break because this is so important. And we're going to play uh, Paul Watson's special report. Then David Knight's coming in here after that break. But one of the reporters, or I guess I need to, because all these examples of false flags were just popping in my head and, and, and admissions of mass shootings and things that it turned out had been staged. And there's so many of them, I can't even remember some of them. I just... It'll pop my head for a minute, and then I'll move on to something else. It's just, it's just littered with them. I mean, is this a false flag? I don't know. But even if it's not, the culture of hyping race war is a form of soft mind control. Just like 2020 did a report how death education, even ABC News got it right, after just a few years of death education, suicide in young girls tripled. It went up almost double in boys, but boys aren't as suggestible as girls. 
in those age groups and suicide tripled because 10 and 11 and 12 year old girls were not thinking about how to commit suicide with a shoelace. I remember how much trouble we'd get in watching fake wrestling and then there'd be kids that thought it was real and that you could get up after you body slam somebody and they'd pick a kid up. I, I never did this, but I knew kids that got in a lot of trouble and they'd body slam. Saw it a few times. Body slam somebody on the playground and, you know, break their back or break ribs. And it's the same thing. People watch this, they hear this, and they, they don't understand that you can kill people. Body slamming somebody. Well, it's the same thing with suicide education. And teen suicide has exploded. It's like they educate girls on cutting and, and have seminars on don't cut yourself. And then what do the girls all do? They all run off and start cutting themselves. The D.A.R.E. program has been proven to cause increased drug use. You go in and show them drugs, show them how to use it. Ten-year-olds aren't thinking about that. It's insane. Let's go to Paul Watson's report. We're going to come back with David Knight in studio. Leftists pounced on the Charleston shooting before the bodies were even cold to push their twin agenda of gun control and racial division. Liberals are hastily exploiting this tragic incident to fabricate the myth that there are armies of white people waiting to commit violent hate crimes against blacks. They're even advocating that only white people be disarmed, an inverse of early racist gun control laws which targeted black people. The reality is somewhat different. Here's what they're not telling you. There's no wave of hate crimes being committed by whites against black people. Justice Department figures show that black people comprise 13% of hate crime victims, a figure in line with their population numbers. White people, on the other hand, comprise 65% of hate crime victims. And from 2003 to 2006, Black people comprise just 7% of hate crime victims. Black people are responsible for half of all homicides within the United States, despite making up only 13% of the population. Department of Justice statistics show that between 1980 and 2008, blacks committed 52% of homicides compared to 45% of homicides committed by whites. There's clearly a problem of violent criminality within the black community, but hardly anyone is talking about it. Despite being outnumbered by whites five to one, blacks commit eight times more crimes against whites than vice versa, according to FBI statistics. A black male is 40 times more likely to assault a white person than the reverse. Incidents involving hate crimes, including murders, where the perpetrator is black and the victim is white, are almost universally ignored by the mainstream media. For years, the phenomenon of overwhelmingly black people randomly attacking white people on the street was disguised by the press, calling it the knockout game, when in reality it represented a disturbing wave of violent black on white hate crime. And once again, we're seeing this dumb argument made by liberals who claim that the Charleston shooting isn't being called an act of terrorism simply because the perpetrator is white. They seem to be incapable of visiting dictionary.com and finding out that terrorism means to use violence to coerce for political purposes particularly targeting institutions of government. Newsflash, when white guys commit acts of terror, which are politically motivated, they are labeled terrorists. Bill Ayers, Ted Kaczynski, Timothy McVeigh, Eric Robert Rudolph, they were all denounced as terrorists. When Ishmael Abdullah Brinsley shot two NYPD cops in the head last December in a Black Lives Matter revenge attack, which was clearly politically motivated, he wasn't called a terrorist. So by that benchmark, neither should the Charleston shooter. Many on the left even demanded that the German wing suicide pilot be labeled a terrorist simply because he was white, when that incident had zero political motivation whatsoever. Same thing with the Chapel Hill shooting. Just like the NYPD shooting, racial division, fueled by the Black Lives Matter movement, in coordination with the Obama Justice Department on one side and white supremacists on the other side who hide behind racism to ignore the very real problem of police brutality, 
meant that the Charleston shooting was all too predictable. Should law-abiding blacks be made to feel guilty for disproportionately high black homicide rates? No, but by the same token, law-abiding whites should not be figuratively put on trial and pressured to atone for their white guilt and relinquish their Second Amendment rights in response to events like the Charleston shooting. So long as the debate continues to be centered around hating on and shaming people for their skin color, resentment on both sides will continue to boil over, encouraging mentally disturbed people to violently act out, with more innocent victims being the price we pay for our obsession with race. Check out the other videos, subscribe to the channel. I'm Paul Joseph Watson for InfoWars.com. We've told you that the soft targets are going to start getting hit. They're going to claim it's right-wingers. The Fed said, the patriots, the veterans, the conservatives are going to attack minorities. They're going to attack the government. We need to federalize everything right now. And then they hype a culture that with their algorithms, and with their actuaries and with their cultural programs, they can then predict with certainty almost down to when it's going to happen and, and what area when crime is going to be committed. That's the new pre-crime computers they've got that are pretty darn accurate. So they're hyping this, and, and police departments and folks have noticed it, that, that they're being targeted. And again, we're not defending corrupt police departments or bad cops. The point is, it's they're trying to cause civil unrest and a civil war to smokescreen the TPP, new banker bailouts, and Europe that is diving into a depression right now. To me, that's the biggest story here. What is the tragic death of nine black people at church by this cold-blooded killer, if you believe the official story? I don't know. I mean, how could you believe it when the government's been caught doing it over and over again? But, but, but regardless whether it's hardcore mind control classic mind control or just cultural mind control this obsession with race and this pushing and has caused it and has and as more whites get attacked and as it comes out on the internet you're going to have mentally ill people that are mad because they can't get a girlfriend because they're weirdos who are going to go out and target black people and vice versa um hispanic immigrants in california don't get along very well with black people. In fact, it's the worst relations out there. They're targeting blacks and killing them. Does that, do we blame all Hispanics? No. This is a time bomb though, ladies and gentlemen. This is America turning into a giant prison culture where we're all divided into our groups and the globalists sit there as the warden and as the jail guards. That's the model. George Soros isn't pushing a revolution to give you all socialism and free goodies. When they're done, we're going to live under a federalized, hardcore fascist police state. That's what he's done in Ukraine, funding literal Heiling Hitler Nazis. We're going to go to David Knight in the rest of this segment, the next with breaking news. But before we do that, Liver Shield is one of the best selling products we've ever had. It's only been out three days. Uh, it's simply amazing. You can take it every day with key concentrated herbs for overall uh, liver health on record. Or you can do the cleanse that I'm currently doing right now. For some folks, this cleanse is smooth. For some, it's it's a little rough with the apple cider vinegar. Uh, but regardless, just Google gallstones. Go to InfoWarsLife.com. Watch the informational video in the liver shield uh, area. And you can see us break it down and show photos uh, of gallstones. Most people have a bunch of stones. Uh, and when almost everybody takes this and does the six-day cleanse, you flush them out of your body. And it's not painful for almost everyone like uh, like a... You know, a kidney stone is very painful. Uh, I've passed a bunch of these six months ago when I did this at first. It was not painful. Uh, the apple cider vinegar can upset your stomach if you do it on an empty stomach. Uh, and the oxy powder flushes out your guts. And, and, you know, that's just more of an irritant for six days. Uh, but it's very exciting. I want to thank you all for your support. Uh, you really get fast, quick results for almost everyone. You've, you've uh, heard the reviews of the other products, read the reviews. They're five-star. We are selling out of Survival Shield Nason Iodine X2. If you want to secure that, we're almost sold out of that. We're working to try to get the raw material and produce more. Infowarslife.com or 888-253-3139. And again, you also need your Beyond Tangy Tangerine uh, and the Organic 2.0 at InfoWarsHealth.com for all the wonderful 
Longevity line of products. When you purchase it there, you can get free shipping with auto ship and a 30% discount when you first sign up to uh, be a member. It costs, what, $10 to be a member uh, at InfoWarsHealth.com. And that purchase also funds our operations, InfoWarsHealth.com. Uh, and you can also go to InfoWarsLife.com to find our products. The new Liver Shield is out. And can't wait to hear your reviews of that. Uh, David Knight, we're going to break in four minutes, but you brought to my attention something I'd forgotten about. So I remember re reading about this years after it happened when I got on air in 95, that there'd been a false flag uh, in South Africa to blame black people. Uh, and it, it was never completely proven, but it was white gunmen <laughs> attacking uh, whites in a church. Uh, let's, let's break this down, uh, David Knight. Yeah, Alex, I, and I have to say that this, this shooting in South Carolina is absolutely horrific to me, the idea that somebody could sit there for an hour with people praying, studying the Bible, talking about God, and the turn, stand up and shoot them. I Sounds mean, like just, mind control. Absolutely insane. But we need to look at and make sure that this doesn't metastasize into a tragedy across this country, turn this into a race war. We don't want that to happen. And so I think it's instructive to look at this situation back in South Africa uh, 22 years ago and see that there were people in South Africa that wanted to start a race war to keep apartheid from being overturned. You had a white minority. They were on the cusp of getting a black majority democracy there. A lot of people didn't want to see that happen. There were uh, outbreaks of violence in the black townships. But this was the first time it had happened in white suburbs. And it's interesting to see what happens. And it's interesting to see how they react to one person with a gun. Now, in the St. James Church, what they had was five hooded gunmen. They break into this church in Cape Town, South Africa during a church service. There's a thousand people there. 10 people are killed, 53 are wounded. They come in with AK-47s, five black gunmen. They th lob in two hand grenades. But one guy in the church stands up with a 38, and he fires back. And at that point, they run. They later caught him, and they said, we had Molotov cocktails loaded and ready to go. They were going to burn that church down with 1,000 people. But it later. turned out some of the gunmen were white. That's right. Now, initial reports from the police said there were two white gunmen as well as the five black gunmen. But even mainstream then media admitted it was politically motivated. Stay there back in 70 seconds. Charlie Manson, Thank you for listening media, he wanted a race war. That's what Helter Skelter was. See, they've been planning this a while. We'll be back. David Knight's in studio with us. <clears throat> Breaking down, 10 shot dead in Cape Town Church. Black gunmen opened fire on congregation and attack likely to undermine negotiations in South Africa. That was back in 1993. So we're talking about, what, 17 years ago or more. Uh, uh, 22 years. I can't yeah. even do math anymore. It's just so yeah. long ago. Yeah, 22 years ago. What, yes. what am I saying? Uh, my head is just spinning, though, all the angles. Finish up with this story. Well, one of the things that, that's important about this is two things. Number one, initial <laughs> reports said that there were five black gunmen. They came in with AK-47s and hand grenades. They also had Molotov cocktails. They left when one guy stood up with a 38, chased off. Five guys, maybe seven, with AK-47. And he wrote the book, uh, Shooting Back. Yes, yes. The initial report said that there were seven, two white men and five black. But then they changed it. They wanted to make it all black against all white because they wanted a race war. His book that you mentioned is called Shooting Back. Uh, the subtitle is The Right and the Duty of Self-Defense. He did a video. He did a book. He did tours. And he encouraged pastors to understand that something like this could happen in their is church. Is he still alive? I don't know. I'll have to look him up and see if we can uh, well, reach out. We got to Reverend Childress coming on about the 14 million black people that were killed, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. nobody talks about it. And of course, that's since Roe v. Right. Wade. Yeah, yeah. That's that's far more deadly in terms of a, a genocidal uh, race war. What's going on at Planned Parenthood? But the other thing that we need to look at from this is the fact that we don't want to create victim disarmament zones like schools, like churches, and say this is just going to be this nice little peaceful area. We don't want to have weapons there. Weapons and the whole Second Amendment is essentially about the right this to duty. This coward, if he did it, went there. And, and, and yes. I'm going to tweet out. I just forgot to do it. I meant to do it this morning. Um, and it's a serious tweet. It's not. It's not sick humor because they'll they'll spin it to that. Um, you know, was in fact everybody should tweet. Why didn't Dylan Roof just go to work at Planned Parenthood? He could carry out the dead black babies every day. Yeah. I mean, he could be part of killing 51 percent of the black people. And then he could be lauded as a hero by Time Magazine. Why didn't Dylan make a lot of money. Yeah. go out and be a liberal and, and, and try to teach blacks to kill their children? I mean, he wants to kill black people. That's the effective way to do it. 
That's right. I mean, Obama's so upset right now, but he's increased funding basically for forced abortion in India and Africa through the UN. That's right. He supports China killing their babies. So why is Obama so upset now? Can you believe he came out within hours after the Second Amendment? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That, that's what they're going to do. And they're also going to try to turn this into a broader race war. And that's why we can look at both of these. I think it's very instructive to look at this with it being in exactly the opposite, with a white minority being attacked by uh, uh, people who are black when it's a black majority, when there's something happening politically in the country, a very uh, a dangerous time, just as we have in this country, trying to use that to start a race war. And yet what we can learn from that is, first of all, we need the Second Amendment. People need to take responsibility. In the church that I went to in North Carolina, the pastor carried concealed. He made sure that there were elders or deacons who were always carrying concealed. That's what churches need to do. That's what schools need to do. That's what everybody needs to do is use our right to self-defense. Absolutely. And understand it's a duty as well and not let them take this away and not let them make this into a larger tragedy of a bigger race war. Well, thank you for reminding me about that. I know Jakari's filing a report right now, and he's got some angles. I'm going to see if I can get Jakari uh, in here uh, when Reverend Childers is on with us to get his perspective on this. Uh, but we've got the reporters back there studying every angle of this. We need somebody to just ask the question, was this a false flag? I'm not saying it is, because there's enough hype in the media to make people come out from under their rocks like this guy. Mm -hmm. uh, but at the same time, I mean, the the attacker at uh, Aurora, clearly mind control. Well, we uh, Sirhan, for Sirhan, 60 years, they've been working on how they can get people to, uh, the CIA was working on how they could get people to assassinate others based on deep subliminal programming that they trigger with something. Well, they give that, you basically. 60 years they've been doing that. What they do now is they just give you a drug called Halcyon. That's what dentists give you to pull your wisdom teeth, and you love it while they're doing it. Mm -hmm. And you can tell somebody while they're on Halcyon, you know, stick your finger in a light socket, they'll do it. Or put your baby in a garbage disposal, they'll do it. I mean, they put them on that, wind them up, and they go do it. As I've been saying since the start of the broadcast one hour ago, they're going to capitalize on this and come after the guns. President Obama gave about a 10-minute talk at approximately 12.20 12.20 Eastern Time. It is now 12 and 8 minutes Central Time. Many affiliates re-air this broadcast throughout the day and evening. You would think it's the end of the world as we know it. That nine poor black people, including a state senator, and by poor I mean unfortunate, were killed allegedly by this whacked out looking weirdo in Charleston, South Carolina. The truth is, we don't know the truth about Dylan Roof. And if you don't know the history of this, Sirhan Sirhan, the LAPD police report, did not shoot RFK, was drugged, didn't remember anything, and his lawyers have sued and gotten all the documents declassified that they had CIA people there, including the guy that shot RFK in the back. And the deputy director of the CIA, it turns out, was there and heard RFK's speech. That's come out in the London Guardian, just off uh, photo analysis. It was just full of famous CIA people. And the LAPD knew that RFK was killed. The Unabomber was in MK Ultra. LA Times reported that as well. Theodore Kaczynski. McVeigh, the state police found him crawling around the ground by his car saying he was drugged. And then he had a chip in him. Whether that's true or not, the point is he was drugged. They do the the, the Aurora Batman shooter, drugged, under high level government control, connected to an MK Ultra program with DARPA at the highest levels of national security. And that's been in the news. He was in a secret DARPA program on mind control. And told people in the jail, they drugged me, I'm under mind control, help me. I'm going through drug withdrawals. I mean, did you see the photos of the Batman supposed shooter? Whacked out of his noggin. There it is, Harvard and the making of the Unabomber, the Atlantic. And even the Atlantic admits he was in the Central Intelligence Agency as a volunteer in 1968 and over the next few decades for the Central Intelligence Agency. Moving forward, 
in almost every case, they either stage it or they find a weak-minded person to wind up to do it. And you've seen the preconditioning of Second Amendment's racist, the NRA's the KKK, even though it was founded to arm blacks against the KKK. And you're like, where do you come up with that? Violent crime, Professor Lott corrected me, using guns, violent crime using guns is down 61% since 1992 using just department-owned numbers. I crunched the numbers, and we hired a statistician with a Ph.D. to crunch the numbers, and they told us 51% in uh, drop in crime. But Lott, who is one of the top statisticians in the world, not just on guns, I mean, he's paid by Fortune 500, a lot of money to, to do their st their projections and stats, he corrected me and said it's 10 points higher. Whatever. The mainstream media had the same number, 51, 52%. Violent crime using guns down 50 plus percent conservatively since 1992. Even the LA Times had the headline last year. Public perceives gun crime is up despite the fact that it's way down. That's a paraphrase of the headline. There it is. Related story. Gun crime has plunged, but Americans think it's up, study says. See? And the truth is, Paul Watson broke it down. Blacks are eight times more likely to attack whites. Now, part of that's police reporting, I believe, is somewhat jilted towards blacks. But the statistics are there and don't lie. It is pushed culturally in racist black areas that, uh, that I mean, we've heard the new, the new Black Panther Party in Florida and Texas have been in the newspapers. I've had some of the folks on from those groups saying, don't you mug in our neighborhood. You go out and mug or kill a white person. And so then that creates this culture where white supremacists are going to go and start taking pot shots at blacks. And back in the 1960s, and we're, we're going to do a report on this uh, right now. They're pulling me all the news articles on it. Helter Skelter. What was Helter Skelter? Why did Why did um, Charles Manson go and cut the baby out of Sharon Tate and her movie star a husband killing him? They were going to blame it on black people and start a race war. The black people went and killed the beautiful blonde. They attacked our woman. Charlie Manson hung out with the top people in Hollywood. Charlie Manson worked for the CIA. That's come out. And he was so whacked out, though, they set him up. It didn't go the way they thought, and it didn't start the race war. And he had this cult of shaved head loons. He had a swastika between his eyes. But in modern media, they never talk about what Manson was planning. Manson was planning a race war to destabilize the U.S. that out of which a socialist, communist, yippie, Utopia was supposed to rise. Fast forward 50 years. Charles Manson, Race War, The Beatles, and Helter Skelter. Yeah, even the Huffington Post has an article about it. That was the plan. But I tell the average person, hey, you know, uh, Charles Manson hung out with the top Hollywood folks and rock and roll stars, and uh, he was a CIA guy, and they were planning a race war. And people don't even know that. And his cult believed 100% without question that Manson's claims that he was Jesus and his prophecies of race war in 1969. And that's what they were pushing then. Insane. And now we got George Soros just overthrew and told CNN he overthrew. He can pull it up. There's a clip of him on Fareed Zarkaria's show. That, yes, he funded and he overthrew Ukraine and then put Nazis in. Can't make that up. Something big's coming this summer. But it's going to be on every front. Now, here's the deal. I've got Reverend Childress joining us. I've got Jakari Jackson coming in to give us his take on this. But I tell you, the media's power to manipulate. We we could send our reporters out on the street. In fact, I'm going to do this, but I have limited staff because they're all busy doing other reports. And just go to the black areas of Austin, the predominantly black uh, in East Austin, 
and talk to black folks and see if they're upset about this. Because I watched black folks when I was downtown this morning and I saw black folks in their cars. And man, I, I would drive by and look. They were shaking their heads. They were angry. They were upset because the media is just assaulting that, you know, you're being killed. The white people are coming after you. It's terrible. Something's got to be done. Creating the perception that there's this all out war on black people. Well, there is with abortion and big government and socialism and dependency, but they're diverting off into. No, the war is specifically whites with their guns. And notice, whether it's Al Sharpton or whether it's Michael Moore, who all have their own bodyguards on record and, and all have their own guns on record. It's those very individuals that keep saying, you know why there's guns? You know what the NRA is about? It's about racist white people out in the countryside that are scared of black people. And that's to make it racial. And they hype that enough, it will become true. International Business Times, U.S. Race War 2015, the guillotines are ready. Michael Savage tells Alex Jones, we got to get Savage back on. And when he said the guillotines are ready, I said, like the French Revolution, he said, yes, the guillotines are ready. Figuratively, the media spun that. That we were saying that, the, the, that black people have guillotines. Uh, and that's how they play on the public's ignorance. When people use a metaphor or an, or, or an analogy. So I will take calls, but I, wish, I just want to hear what you think about this. Do you think it's a false flag? Is there any doubt they're trying to start a race war this summer? How do we stop it? I just want to get like 60 seconds from you. Intersperse with Jakari and Reverend Childress. So we're going to the big roundtable, free-for-all discussion forum here, right into the third hour. 800-259-9231. 800-259-9231. And all I ask is that you have a good telephone and just get to your point, because I want to get to a lot of people, and you know I'm bad about going to calls. So 800-259-9231. But every expert we've talked to, has been definitive on the fact that they're coming after the guns, they're gearing up, they're funding their foundations, they're funding their local campaigns, their federal campaigns, they're getting Obama ready with executive action to restrict the Second Amendment. It's in the new TPP treaty. They're trying to ram through tomorrow while we're all busy, you know, thinking the end of the world just happened. Now they had a bill for concealed weapons without permit, now dead because of this already dead before it even happened this no doubt is the push to get our guns when the answer is arm yourself they had a white church remember in colorado well, there's actually a mixed church of everybody but and a guy came in to kill everybody and they had an off-duty cop there who volunteered to be armed and they took him out they were able to shoot one person and i'm telling you if you're a soft target like a church or a shopping mall or whatever they should invite good people with CHLs to have their firearms. Because thugs are inherently scared. Notice this uh, reported shooter, Roof, gave, gave up the cops. <laughs> Let me tell you, you're going you're gonna to be in a supermax prison that's living death the rest of your life. What an idiot if he really did it. And he fits the M.O. of some loser that, you know, blamed all his problems on the black people. Hundreds of thousands of people die here in auto accidents, but they're not hyping it as the end of the world. But mass shootings, boy, they get hyped like it's the end of the world. And it is very sad. And you can personalize it, a cold-blooded killer sitting there for an hour with people before he starts exterminating them. And the media is going to play on that, humanizing what happened to cause as much pain as possible. Well, the folks are dead. It's not going to bring them back. Humanizing babies, though, will get people to stop killing their kids. I don't care what color they are. And that's the real litmus test. Every so-called liberal I've talked to that's pro-abortion will then, when the camera and on, go, nobody wants these poor black people. You going to take care of them? Including blacks. Reverend Childress is joining us. And I just don't get how I'm supposed to get all sad and freak out about nine dead people. I mean, I, I don't like it. But I'm really upset about how they're going to create racial division. Coming up after these calls, right before I go to Reverend Childress, 
Reuters reports deposit withdrawal surge at Greek banks as debt news tightens. We warned of this uh, on Monday. Greece could be forced to lock down savers cash as debt crisis worsens. This is going all over the world. See, this is what's big. What's big? 14 million aborted blacks or nine killed? One man's a tragedy, 10,000 is a statistic. Joseph Stalin. It's true. How do we humanize everyone? And just to be manipulated and played by the globalist, whether this event was real or not, it was culturally manufactured, if it wasn't a false flag, by pushing a race war, which there admittedly got going as a divide and conquer, while the globalists loot us and destroy our country and our jobs and our future. Tom, Joe, Jerry, Jesse, Francis, and others, we're taking your phone calls right now. Tom in New York, what's your take on this situation, this tragedy? Yeah, Alex, you've been right on the ball with a lot of what you're seeing. I, uh, I'm currently in the area, and I've been following this thing. I got up about 3 in the morning. Something wasn't feeling right. Turned the TV on. I've been uh, watching all the different networks with all the PowerPoints that they've been putting out. Uh, just want to run down some background of this character that we're talking about and all this. I guess the alleged trespassing incident he had earlier that showed up on his criminal record involved him uh, basically casing a shopping mall, wanting to find out what time they closed, how many employees would be there, as if that may have been a potential setup for an incident along these lines. I guess also he was being treated with a pharmaceutical known as subsoxone, which is supposed to be to take care of heroin withdrawals or opioids. That's right. Withdrawals. I meant to mention that. I mean, they're always on some type of manipulative, weird uh, drug. Uh, and, and, and I was looking into that drug. Isn't it in an anti-anxiety, anti-psychotic range? Right. The listed side effects for it are uh, severe anxiety, severe depression, suicide, uh, hallucination, as well as amnesia. Go figure. Oh, he was on an amnesiac. What have I been saying for an hour and a half? Yeah, exactly the same thing. Now, his next involvement he has is for uh, a drug bust in Lexington County, South Carolina. Anybody that's from that area, they'll know very well that that is a complete frame-up area as far as uh, pullover and planning of narcotics. So I don't know what possibly that could have played into it, but, you know, I'm watching all these different things this morning. Uh, you did talk about the statements he had made when he was in the church. The earlier thing I heard slip out and not come back since was the words were muttered while he was doing the shooting that, yeah, black people were taking over everything, but something needed to be done about it, and he couldn't handle living in a world like that anymore. It was more or less to that effect, word for word. Uh, the other thing I'm looking at this that's really sticking out in my mind was, you know, we just went from Slager to this. It seems like when the incident went down with Officer Slager down there, South Carolina didn't waste any time whatsoever handling that as they should have. Uh, if I do remember right, the family of the victim in that case, Walter Scott, he did not want Al Sharpton, uh, the family, they didn't want Al Sharpton anywhere there to stir anything up. Oh, clearly now, they've got to divert with the doubling black unemployment with the total screw job of blacks under Obama, that was his job, was to be the political cover. All they've got is race. And, and again, the goal is federalization of police, a summer of rage, using that as the political diversion uh, to go after the guns. It's here. The new push to get our guns is here. We're in a fighting stance politically. We've had all the experts on from Larry Pratt to Professor Lott, Dr. Lott. We told you it's coming. It's here. Uh, I don't know if this is a false flag. But they've done them before. Uh, and it's a false flag. And then, again, he was on an antipsychotic as usual. As usual. Uh, uh, he was on psych meds. I mean, it's always the same. Uh, something smells here. Ladies and gentlemen, we are live and we're broadcasting worldwide today. Thank you so much for tuning into the broadcast. Tragic uh, attacks uh, that took place. Nine dead uh, in this uh, attack. And every time somebody's killed by a psychopath or a mentally ill person, it's a tragedy. Uh, we have cases of uh, today of a monk, you know, stabbing to death uh, one of his uh, fellow uh, members of his sect. Will we blame butcher knives? Uh, clearly not.
Uh, but there is a move now to blame the Second Amendment. President Obama spoke about an hour ago. We took it live, uh, blaming the Second Amendment and basically calling for restrictions. We know they're heating back up for this, and they're saying gun ownership is the new KKK. We've heard it from Al Sharpton. We've heard it from Michael Moore, all the usual uh, suspects, time and time and time again, using this to try to disarm the people. We know gun crime's down 50-plus percent since 1992. We showed those statistics earlier, even showed the L.A. Times earlier admitting it. But the perceptions being created that gun crime is up. This is just unconscionable that this is happening. And we see massive push towards racial division, massive push that that's our problem in America to destabilize local governments and basically federalize things. That is the push that is taking place. Now, separate from that, we have tens of millions of black people. We'll get the numbers from the expert, Dr. Reverend Childress, from blackgenocide.org, that since Roe v. Wade, over 50% of black people in this country were never born. Now, I've gone out to abortion clinics and demonstrated and done reports 30, 40 times over the years. But I've never specifically went out there and made it just about black babies. We did that last month. It's all these horrible Red Brigade communists come out from under a rock, say, I, you know, I, we kill our babies, how great it is. Why isn't anybody concerned about innocent babies? This guy coldly sat there reportedly for an hour before he killed these people in a prayer meeting, including a state senator who was the preacher. And then left one person as a witness and one five-year-old lived because they played dead. Pretty smart. Well, it would have been smarter if that state senator would have been packing heat. And the answer is to start arming. The answer is to defend ourselves. The answer to bad people is good people with guns. Obama said no other country has violence like this in the Western world. That's not true. Look at the numbers in England, the numbers in areas of Europe. Upwards of three times the muggings and stabbings and, and, and violent crime and burglary numbers. Yes, we have the highest rate in the Western world for people being shot to death. That's because we're an armed society. And yes, there are problems with guns. But it's a human problem, not the problem of the gun. And you can't penalize good people because of what bad people do. We're going to go to Reverend Childers here in a moment. I wanted to get Shikari Jackson here for kind of a roundtable discussion. We're also going to go to uh, Jesse, Francis, Joe, Jerry, Vincent, and others and take your phone calls. Uh, but Shikari, before I go to Reverend Childress, and we'll put it, Reverend Childress' website up there with his URL, uh, before we do that, uh, just overall in there analyzing different angles of this, um, what's your overall first assumption, and are you surprised we've confirmed that he was on a, a psychotropic-style drug? Oh, not at all. When we talk about these drugs, I mean, these people were on, uh, myself and Kid Daniels, we went to Fort Hood after this most recent shooting, and Kid asked the general, he said, was this guy on any type of drugs? And he answered him flat out and said yes. So we see this time and time again, these people who take these uh, mind-altering drugs that are supposed to help you, but to anybody who had watched these commercials, Alex, they see in the fine print when the guy tries to speak real fast, this could, uh, you stop taking this drug immediately if you have any thoughts of suicide or violence towards others or something to that effect. So it, that does not surprise me at all. Now, as far as, as far as the actions of this individual, Mr. Roof, well, I shouldn't call him Mr. Roof, of uh, going to this church and killing these people. He looks know. whacked out of his brain. Yeah, I mean, you can take one look at this guy. They have mug shots of him. They have, I guess, Facebook pictures of wherever these pictures come from. And he definitely looks like he's on another planet. You know, he's, he has this blank stare, this weird haircut. The guy looks like something's wrong with him. And uh, to see this, it's very horrible. But to anybody who would say, let's immediately take away the guns, I was telling you off air, Alex, that I had an uncle, you know, he's passed away now. But back when we had a church up in Michigan, if he wasn't packing, he made sure that the person watching the door had the heat on him. You know, and, and it wasn't, you know, some obtruse thing. It wasn't, you know, very pushy. You know, he's just... Politely answering the door, opening the door. Hey, come on in. And you just had a, you know, a Glock or whatever you had. Because somebody might come looking for somebody they want to shoot at the church. Yeah. Or it might be a crazy. Yeah, somebody who just wants to go in there and kick up stuff. But that's the reason why you have an armed society so you can defend yourself. And this is no way of knocking the police. But just this most recent incident, dialing 911 did not save the people in this building. That's why you need to have the ability to defend yourself. And we think about the shootings that happened 
recently right here in Dallas, also this past Thanksgiving here in Austin. And yeah, the guy goes to a hard target, a police station. He's able to fire off rounds in both of these cases, but the police take him down. Why? Because the police are armed. They could respond. They don't have to dial 911. They are 911. That's why you need to be your own 911 and have the ability to defend yourself. That's right. Charles, Black Charleston Church should have been its own 911. They should have been armed. Uh, 911 didn't save the victims at Charleston. There's your headline. I mean, we have, we're in a culture war, folks, a war for individual liberty. What do you think, and I want to go to Reverend Childress and stay with us, Shikari, uh, of your analysis. What do you think of the instant attempt to claim that guns are now somehow racist? Well, you know, they always blame guns, whether it's, you know, the L.A. Times or when the uh, Elliot Roger case happened briefly or recently. And, you know, he had a knife, he used a car, but just the simple fact that he used a gun, we have to ban all the guns. It wasn't let's ban the cars, let's go ban the knives. And now when we're talking about the uh, simple act of owning a firearm as racist, it's nothing new, but it's very inaccurate. You know, because regardless of what they may be doing today, the NRA was founded to help minorities learn how to shoot. And a lot of people forget that. They say the NRA is the KKK, which cannot be further than the, from the truth. And, and they know that when they say that on Fox Sports and CNN. Let's not forget, Rupert Murdoch has these messages on his other platforms. Fox News, he has just to control conservatives. Mm -hmm. But outside of that, he's pushing carbon chain, you know, carbon taxes, gun control. It's sick. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and they, it's a, a cultural shame. They want you to think owning a gun makes you a white racist Southerner. You know, there I go out to these open carry rallies. Yeah, there's a lot of white people there, but you also have black people. You also have women. It's not just a white male. Do you feel thing. welcome there? Oh, yeah. And, you know, most of the people I know, whether it's Grisham or uh, Justin, the other open carry guys, a lot of them are white. And, you know, I've never felt out of place or, you know. In fact, you're friends than, with a lot of folks. We can yeah. go out and do stuff. Yeah. I, I don't look at what color you are. You don't either. But that's what these socialists do. The truth is, Jakari, we're liberals. In the Thomas Jefferson sense, we want freedom for everybody. We hang out with whoever we want. We're not looking at skin color. The controlled left, all they've got is race now. And they're invoking all these white races to come out of the woodwork. We know they've got bots spamming InfoWars with racist garbage from both sides to get us all fighting with each other. We've got to stop it. Uh, I want to get into race war with you after uh, Reverend Childress leaves us. I want to keep you with us. Someone, Larry Nichols, joins us. He's a big guest. He used to be basically Bill Clinton's right-hand man wow. when he was governor. Uh, exposed a lot of the murders, Clinton Chronicles. They've tried to kill him before. Everything he's written about with Hillary is now coming true. He's going to be joining us. Normally, okay. I'd cancel a guest with something big like this happening, but he understands how their politics work, so stay with us. Uh, Reverend Childress, thank you for holding. Thank you for coming on on short notice. Uh, last time we had you on, it was about the fact that you spontaneously had already started All Black Lives Matter. One of my crew had the idea to do it, too. We didn't even know that you were doing it when we called you to get you to comment on it uh, to try to point out that all black lives matter. Uh, of course, I'm making the parallel here. Yes, nine lives are terrible that have been lost. Uh, this is a terrible situation. Obviously, a mentally ill, uh, racist, crazy person who also has a horrible chili bowl haircut uh, who was on psychotropics, we're now learning. But what about the tens of millions of blacks that were cut up in the womb cold-bloodedly as well. The police and Obama keep talking about how cold-blooded it was to go sit down with people in a church, and it was super cold-blooded. But uh, isn't it more cold-blooded to kill babies and then go have lunch? Oh, there's no, no question about that. But we, your audience and myself, I, I'm not as uh, intuitive as I would like to be. There's something systemic about this. I, I really believe you do have an excellent observation as if that this is being enticed or this young man on a drug uh, was given instructions. It's amazing to me that he picked such a historical place, a, a site that would be endeared by African-Americans in order to go in and cause this carnage. That's right. He wasn't, uh, oh, that's a great point. He wasn't just trying to kill black people. He wanted to stir folks up or whoever advised him. I mean, does yes. anybody believe this yes. chili bowl haircut guy that looks like he's got a 70 IQ? I mean, he looks, I don't mean to be mean, he looks mentally disabled. He looks like yeah. dumb and dumber. Does anybody believe he would be, uh, I'm sorry, go ahead. No, I appreciate it because it, it, it appears to me that he was uh, coerced, that this is where that jargon, for what I understand he was saying inside the church, is typical old Klan language to entice white men to join the Klan. 
but it's like almost like overkill. Like they were giving him what to say so it would be directed towards the Klan. I mean, it was kind of weird to me hearing some of the comments that he made before he allowed this one young lady uh, to live. But uh, why is, and once again, South Carolina. Now, you now, you know, out of all the police issues, the one involving Walter Scott was the most blatant. And now you have this incident. South Carolina really is going to have to call home the church, call on his faith. There must be peace. And of course, Al Sharpton and Jesse are already there. I don't know really how this is all going to turn out, but it is, as you say, someone unquestionably, systemically, is trying to cause race indifference, race war. I'm just going to be plain and simple. And um, if I would have picked all the states to do it, I would have had to say when I thought about it, yes, yeah, South Carolina, because they should have been reeling from the Walter Scott situation. Now you have this young man picking a historical black church, one with a history, one with a state senator. And you're right, a state senator in these times and days needs to know he, he has to be armed. He has to be able to protect himself or have someone there. And you pick that particular historical black uh, institution, that site, which I understand, uh, I think my wife just told me that it's also been uh, defined by the state as historical to, to do this. So um, I think we may not ever get to the bottom of it, but I, I, I think it was coerced. I think it was planned. See, when I first came on, you know, I said, I don't want to jump to conclusions. And my gut tells me he might have actually done the shooting, but that doesn't mean that he wasn't wound up. And then I said, if he was given amnesics, mm. then we know it's a setup because McVeigh, Sirhan, Sirhan and others, amnesics came up and they didn't remember anything. And like I said, my dad's a retired oral surgeon and dentist. Uh, when people would come in for sedation dentistry, he'd, he'd give them Halcyon. And if you take Halcyon, you, I mean, I don't want to give out too many details, give folks ideas, but you can give somebody a large dose of that, and you can pretty much give them a gun and say, kill that person. Or you can say, stick your hand in this, you know, this, this garbage disposal. It's mind control. Uh, and that's just one drug in the whole class. Now we learn, and it's in the news, that he was on a drug that is in, beyond psychotropic, that is in the amnesic class. So that's exactly what I would expect to see. I mean, this is really looking bad. This is, and like you said, I'd forgotten that, but studying the Klan back in college, because, you know, they have you in U.S. history, do a whole semester basically on it, that the Klan, that's how they would recruit. They're getting our white women. Oh, my yes. God. This is yeah. textbook. This just yeah. sounds like. Yes. Well, you know, the Southern Poverty yeah. Law Center was running the Elohim City White Supremacist Compound. I'm just saying, it, it sounds like something out of central casting. Uh, so you're saying in your gut this looks kind of like it's been messed with here, Reverend? Uh, you will find out, or maybe you won't find out. It, it was too, it, it, it was, it, it's obviously textbook. I think they feel, because of the tensions already, that people won't look. Uh, and to see, indeed, that this is some type of subterfuge by those who sit in high places. Let's, let's, let's face it, they're the only ones that can pull this off. But um, that language certainly was a tip-off. Uh, the fact that they would leave someone there, you know, it's almost that that was the instructions for him to do. This is the way you do this. Now, if he's really smart, nobody walks out, <laughs> okay? But if, if he's been basically coerced or constrained to do this, uh, Obviously, he is a guinea pig or he's the scapegoat for something a lot bigger. Sure. Well, the mainstream uh, media is going to demonize us for bringing this up and even questioning. But if there's a long history of staged and provocateur events, we'd be crazy not to. But look at the perfect timing with the White House, the Justice Department caught running a false flag, Fast and Furious with the yes. guns. It came out CBS News. They were going to blame the Second Amendment. I mean, that was the plan. They've got a history it's, it's all they've got with black unemployment doubling, the abortions, black folks waking up. Uh, is they're really pushing a race war? Uh, it, it, it's now, I, I'm really going out there, but these things are coming to me very strongly. This is done just before the Juneteenth, or Juneteenth celebrations this weekend. Oh, you, yeah. you will have oh. across the nation African-Americans gathering together for black pride, 
Uh, a lot of it is basically uh, some of it to blame the established order for our issues and problems. <laughs> but um, they're going to be gathering. I'm going to skip this break. It's too important. I'm sorry. Last break I'm skipping. But uh, please continue. This is bombshell. So everybody gets together, gets motivated, and then is directed by Obama, go after the guns. So take right. the tragedy, take all the, the pain, the whole history of abuse, and then fuse it in as a weapon of anti-gun. It's genius. It's perfect timing. Yeah. Well, well, yes, I hate to say it's evil genius, but it's genius because you have some of these speakers at these rallies that are basically, let's face it, I'm an African-American. They hate America. And they will take this. This will be the topic of every speech in every celebration across wow. America. Mm -hmm. That's right. This See, weekend. Wow, you really tied it all together. Uh, it, last night, I've been talking about it. I've been having an ominous bad feeling. I mean, I've been saying I said it yesterday on air. Yeah, you've been saying that for a while. And and I said I think it could be race war because I can see all this yeah. hype. And by race war, I mean get everybody, you know, idiots, white and black, killing each other. It won't be like a general, like everybody kills each other. I mean, and Jakari, go, you know, go get in a fist fight. But but they're <laughs> hyping this discord, hyping this manipulation. And I was on the Red Guard website, Facebook, and I was looking at their L.A. chapter and their Oregon chapter. And it was like, the time's coming. The only good pig's a dead pig. We, you know, we're warming up. We're getting ready. And then I learned they're foundation funded. They got professors handling them. And they're really coming out of dry ice, activating everywhere. And that's just a sign, like a fever blister ri rising up or, or, or eczema that you're sick inside. These sores are coming up. And the super hardcore left is like activating right now and getting ready to make their move. And the red flags are coming out. I'm telling you, this summer is going to be big. And I, if they hype this enough, then racist blacks are going to kill whites. Racist whites are going to kill blacks. Mentally ill people are going to start doing stuff. And they could really kick something off. I'm really concerned. And it's also two weeks, uh, three weeks away from the NAACP convention in Philadelphia. Perfect timing. Where I will be at to uh, doing my thing, but we won't talk about well, that. Well, right Reverend now. Childers, impart more <laughs> deep knowledge and discernment on us because this just makes me nauseated to see us played, whether it was staged or not. Well, They're going to use the crisis to, to, to go after the guns and stir everybody up and divert from the anti-human agenda that's particularly aimed at black people from the globalist. I will clearly say this, and I don't, there's not a person in America that could doubt me on this. That if you are going to do something like this, this is the perfect time. People are making their speeches now wow. for what they're going to say Saturday and, and some begin on Friday, even all through the weekend. So if you're going to have a theme across America. Thursday's perfect. To, to, to African-Americans, this is this is the day. This is the day we we finalize our sermons for the pulpit. <laughs> this this is it. And I'm saying to myself, who is doing this? I don't want to really believe who's doing it, but uh, it's, it's obvious people who are very well, well, well endowed, well, you know, situated and are in a position to profit from it. So I, I was on the phone this morning when I heard about it and we discussed this uh, ministerially. I said, come on, look at the timing on this. Look at look at who's doing it. Look, that speech he gave as he left. What, what, of course, will now be being said across America. And now they admit he was on this amnesic <laughs> drug. I mean, he's on a literal mind control drug. This guy it, doesn't seem that smart to pull it off. I, I agree with what Reverend Children It takes saying. a lot of will. I don't mean to interrupt. It takes yeah. a lot of will to reload and, and kill nine people in cold blood. Sorry. Oh, yeah. It, just to uh, echo off what he was saying, you know, yeah, he may very well had these tendencies to go out here and do this, but... If let's say he was in his white supremacist group or whatever, and he mentions this to people like, well, if you're going to do it, you may try to do it, you know, this week, you know, just. And they would have there. a federal handler in there like it at Elohim City, Southern Property Law Center, winding everybody up. Yeah, it's uh, he made ago, some great points. Months, months ago, this was 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 planned. They they you know, you, you know, you have a very, very skilled enemy. Months ago, this kid is was prepped for this uh, this week. And um, this, there's events going on in Selma this weekend. There's events going on in every major... And the movies have society. come out. Everything's yeah. been timed. Just like Pearl Harbor came out right before 9-11. And again, I'm not saying the government did 9-11. They, they allowed it to take place. That's now been basically leaked and declassified. You, you can see the whole rollout, Reverend Childers. I'm so glad I got you on because you just crystallized it all for me. How do we avert this? How do we stop them 
Well, as well, Europe goes into depression this week with runs on the banks happening now. Wow. Well, I didn't know that, but it's it's certainly the recipe for total chaos in America because of all the incidences leading to this one. I believe that they thought this would be the one to tip everything over. Once again, if the church is a church, we 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 turn the other cheek, we we stand up, we protest, we demand love. This is what Martin said, uh, that we were to protest in Christian love. And we really look at this situation and, and not view all Caucasian as uh, the sentiments that this uh, young man has expressed, but also know that we're being set up. I'm praying that people would recognize that this is all a setup oh, and that you know, they, get, they get back to our, uh, our church. This also should wake the church up. The church has been sleeping now you need the church for peace. Wow. Look uh, at the priming. Look at the that. preparations. Look at the, for the gear up. Reverend Shoulders, we've got to have you on every day on the nightly news <laughs> and the radio for the next. You no, know, I'm telling you, because you, with your knowledge, experiencing this in your life, being on the front lines, you really have knowledge that I don't have. I've got knowledge you don't have. Jakari's got knowledge I don't have. I have knowledge. All of us together, you know, trying to look at this. I'm getting chills right now because... Because you can see all the preparation building towards this. This is the big move, is a race war to bring in total chaos and then total federalization of, with this evil Justice Department. They've even gotten rid of the other attorney general who had baggage to put the new one in for the political persecutions of conservatives and Christians. They're dropping the hammer. Jakari, I interrupted you. You were going to say something. I... Oh, no, you hit it right there in the head. And as you talk about the uh, Justice Department, you know, I thought it was very convenient that, you know, just over this past uh, few months, they switched out Holder, who was supposed to be gone last year. So now, you know, when they come in with their new regulations and we want to do this, we want to do that. And people bring, bring up things like Fast and Furious. Well, you can't hold us accountable because that was the old attorney general. And I really hope that they do have a change over there in the Justice Department. But I just can't see that happening in the near future. Persecution of libertarians and Christians is worse. I mean, they're, I mean who knows what they'll do to us? I mean, it, it's getting scary. And what about the, I mean, look, there are a lot of bad cops. They're, they're racist cops. You know, there's a lot of issues. But just saying kill the cops and, and they let these leftist groups go out and say kill cops. Mm -hmm. And now cops are getting killed. Then the cops are going to get more aggressive. There's going to be, yes. it's going to blow up. Yes. I mean, it's a setup. Yeah, yes. it's just getting worse. Just getting worse. Well, well, pitting the police against people will certainly bring in martial law. Uh, very quickly, and, and, and they are circling the wagons. If I was a police officer, I'd have to circle the wagons too because they're the ones that have my back. Uh, it's unfortunate. I would also realize there are bad police, but in the final analysis, I would expect my, my comrade to have my back, and unfortunately now my back has to be covered by the public I'm supposed to protect because they are being incited against me as a police Stay there, officer. Reverend. I want to do five more minutes with you. you just incredible insight. Piercing insight. Ama oh, man. I, this is it. This is the big move. And war with the Russians and depression in Europe. It's all going to kick loose. Oh. Blackgenocide.org. Reverend Childress knows his eugenics history. He knows his globalist history probably better than I do. And blackgenocide.org is just a treasure trove of fighting evil. I mean, my heart, I don't want to be one of these fake liberals like Clinton going, I'm, I love black people. I'm like a black person. I, you know what? I'm a person. I got red blood. And it makes me sick watching black people, particularly in the clutches of the nanny state that wants to kill them. And to know that these top liberals are current grand dragons, like Senator Byrd and others, who's dead now. He never left the Klan, folks. And... Does that mean the Republicans are good? No, they're horrible. Look at them with the TPP. And they want us at each other's throats. This is cynical. It's sick. And whether they wound this guy up or whether it was staged or not, they're not letting a good crisis go to waste. They're going to rub salt in the wound. And the scripting of, oh, and they, they were there, and he just cold-bloodedly killed them. And it was horrible. They wouldn't normally do that because they don't want to incite stuff. They are inciting. I don't know if the police chief is that stupid or was fed this by the Justice Department. But if I, and then Reverend Childress points out Juneteenth's coming up. And then the big NAACP meeting and all this with all these movies and TV shows out about race. 
and the media, when you see prepping, and see, I was saying I didn't see the media with their talking points at first, but actually the talking points came before. And then they didn't want to be seen with their talking points because it's gotten too obvious. Like when Bloomberg got caught with the emails the night before saying, get Twitter ready for a big shooting the night before Sandy Hook. Sandy Hook. Uh, I mean, I'm ranting here. Reverend Childers, we just got three minutes left in the short segment. I'm going to come back with Jakari Jackson and Larry Nichols. But other points you'd like to impart, and I'd like to invite you back on tomorrow, please, sir, uh, as we know more about this. Well, it appears that uh, Time Magazine, as you remember when the last time I was on your program, it was there in South Carolina where they said Black, uh, black Lives Matter. Uh, r right now, South Carolina has become ground zero. Whatever happens from here certainly will determine the climate in America for a while. And I don't know what, what I'm praying that the people of South Carolina show unconditional love and also uh, being that we're all family and that they can really quell this. I'm telling you, if they hype things up, uh, Baltimore will seem like Disneyland from this. So it's, it's unquestionable that we, we have to unquestionably pray for the peace of uh, Charleston, this pastor, uh, this pa now this church is basically without leadership. When you kill the people on Wednesday night, that's your core group. That, those are the people that really get the, the church moving. They've all been taken out. And so I, I hope the church rallies, but they rally in They love. have martyred this church. You know, it could be a white supremacist plot, too, and not a governmental one or Southern Poverty Law Center type op because like there that. are some white supremacists who do want to start a race war like Helter Skelter and um, what we saw with Charlie Manson. But then he was tied into the government as well. Man, I tell you, I just I can feel it in my gut, like you said, Reverend, in your, in your spirit, something big's about to happen. Right. I just don't know who it is. Uh, but it's obviously that it is. The young man was, was, was prepped for this, not this week, weeks ago. This, 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 is, this is going down now. Of course, it's all, you know, they have to see how the people respond. It's an anticipation on how the people respond. This is where you call on God, and he can take something evil and turn it around to make something wonderful happen. And if he doesn't... So I that's mean, the answer. Pray for <laughs> peace. Pray for discernment. Pray the scales yes. be lifted off people's eyes. And we use this to come together, not uh, apart. Yes, that's the design. Design is to separate and cause the war. And cause uh, more government intrusion, and no question, and control to strip us of more of our freedoms. That's the plan. All right, but, God bless yeah, you, sir. We're going to who's doing it. <laughs> okay, you, thank uh, you for having. You me. can join us tomorrow. Yes, sir. Tomorrow's Friday. Right. Yes, sir. God yeah. bless you. Normally, I would cancel all the guests for the day, and then get guests that are on specifically on the topic of what's happening, like Reverend Childress earlier, who believes this is a wind-up toy false flag of some type normally i would do that but with the guess we've got there's no need to do that because he's such an expert larry nichols was the clinton state house whistleblower and government insider he served as political confidant and advisor pretty much the right hand man to governor bill clinton for more than 10 years and helped bill clinton get elected and re-elected as governor of arkansas the film, The Clinton Chronicles, and others were basically made about Nichols. Mr. Nichols uh, is unrestrained of political correctness and was specifically mentioned by Bill Clinton in his memoir. And he's been there with Clinton exposing his murders, the drug dealing, uh, the, the, the attacking people, the raping the women. He is the Clinton expert. We're going to be having him on a lot. He's probably been on the show 20 times over the years, hadn't been on in a few years. And uh, with the Clintons, like an old nightmare coming back, uh, Larry Nichols is here. He wrote a book about it, predicting what Hillary would do, and it's all happening. I remember reading the book years ago. In fact, I was trying to find a copy of it around here. It's out of print. Uh, but Larry Nichols has gone through living hell, because when the Clintons went from kind of being boss hoggish corruption to being outright murderers and stuff, that's when Nichols went up against them. Because Nichols wasn't going to be part of ripping off old people and, you know, killing people. And, you know, you saw what happened to Vince Foster. But clearly they're trying to hype a race war. They pretty much admit that. Or, or, or a giant chaos crisis fiasco. So then they can federalize the police and come in and take over. I mean, it's unprecedented to have U.S. presidents and the attorney general 
rubbing salt in the wounds, acting like the police basically are the Klan in the 60s bombing churches. I mean, even in black-run cities where half the cops are black and the whole city council's black, you know, you think the cops are killing black people because they're racist. No, they're killing them because they've been given murder training, but, you know, vicious jujitsu training, you name it, and beating people's brains out. I mean, I've been to jail for protesting and had them in the Travis County Jail for no reason. Didn't smart off nothing. Run my head in the wall, give me a little bruise, wasn't that hard. And then the, and then the jail guard's like, you want to do something? Go ahead. I have the New York police, when they arrest me for protesting, take my handcuffs off in the jail bay, five cops, and go, you want to do something? Go ahead and make a swing and then sit there and start talking trash to me. And I was like, are you ki kidding? I said, are you really about to attack me and say I attacked you? I said, whatever. Then they had some guy come up and taunt me in the jail cell. And I'm not even going to go into that. The point is, it wasn't because I was, the, most of them were white in that precinct, and I was white. You, you got some mentally ill jerks who want power, who get in there, and instead of running them out of the departments, they're trying to put them in departments in many cities. But is that a racial issue? Maybe there's a stereotype that black people commit more crimes because of the type of crime and what's happened in those cultures. In some areas, that's true. But, but And there's probably some racism, too. But in the final equation... Having a war with the police is about bringing in chaos. So joining us is Larry Nichols, Jakari Jackson's riding shotgun. Larry, when we called him, said, you don't want to move me in another day? Yeah, I, I want to get Larry back on next week for a full hour just on the Clintons. And we'll spend some time on him today. You can have this gone for five hours. Now let's book him today for whenever you can do it next week. We really appreciate Larry Nichols uh, coming on. But you can see order out of chaos. You can see that they plan to not relinquish power. You can see they've been running Obama the whole time. You can see that her chief of staff was at Bilderberg this year and nobody else showing us where they're going. So Larry Nichols, uh, thank you so much for coming on the broadcast. Hey, Alex, how are you, my friend? It's an honor. Well, it's an honor to talk to you, and I want to get you on Skype as soon as we can because I know you've got Skype yeah. capabilities most days. Uh, Larry, but it's good to see your picture up here on TV with us in radio. Where do you want to start? I mean, you really are. Oh. You were there where they were making the biscuits. You were there when they were making the sausage. I mean, you know how Bill Clinton was made and Hillary. What is going on? I mean, everybody has a bad feeling in their gut. We know bad stuff's coming. What do you see happening? Well, it's exactly what you and I had talked about years ago. Thankfully, thanks to you and other programs, we stopped it. You know, Bill was using, if you'll recall, Alex, Jesse Jackson. Remember, Jesse Jackson was to spo supposed to start riots in five major cities. And then Bill Clinton would, of course, have to declare martial law. And once they get the provisional government rule in, then they, they get to be king forever. We stopped it by making it public. Well, now we've got problems. They're festering it up. And no, you are so right. It's not about race, Alex. I mean, yeah, there's the underpinning of race. The folks, all of this that's going on is about power. Power. And the Clintons absorb power like we take in sunshine. Now, the thing that's going on today, you have to be so careful, so very careful, because at any time, you know... They're going to start tit for tat. Well, you kill some black guys, somebody kills some white guys, some white guys kill some more black guys. And then you end up in this total chaos. And when that happens, all bets are off. And whoever is sitting, folks, whoever is in power when this thing collapses, they become king or queen until they don't want to be king or queen anymore. And you're talking about some major league powerful people, Alex, and they want it bad. Now, talking wow. about the Clintons, uh, the book that you and I talked about years ago <clears throat> that I, I told your producer what I wish you would do, Alex, is take the book, The Genie's Out of the Bottle. Take the front part out because that's dated to 98 and 99. Put in something current there, Alex, and then get it out to people. Sell it to people because in the book, the genie's out of the bottle. 
it will tell you exactly what Hillary's doing. Exactly. Every step of the way. And as you know, how do I know? Because I helped write the book. Dick Morris, me, Paul Begala, the people that were known as the kitchen cabinet for the Clintons. We developed this system to get a sick, perverted, pathological liar in the Deep South in the mid-70s, elected governor, into keeping there. And with a hippie wife that was a full-blood, card-carrying ward around her neck, member of the United States Communist Party, Hillary, it took some doing. But it works, and it works today. And I hate to say it, Alex, but I, I, the reason I'm here with you, you and I were together when you were young and I was middle-aged. Now I'm old, and I guess you're still young. But it's back again. It's back again. It, it, it's coming. It's coming like Well, I'm not that young, brother. I'm, I'm probably no. about the age you were when we first started talking 20 years That's ago. True. And we should probably briefly start at the beginning because why you worked with them at first, but then when it got really corrupt, you said, I'm not going to be part of this. Lost everything, you name it. A lot of people mm -hmm. got killed who were around you. They killed police, mm -hmm. state police. I mean, they killed a lot of folks trying to shut you up, but they didn't want to kill you to turn you into a martyr. Well, and because I had to help develop the system, I knew where the bodies were. They knew that. And then I knew a little bit about how the system worked. And so, Alex, believe it or not, you kept me alive 20 years ago because by staying public, they couldn't KO me. Because if they did, everybody would say, "Oh, okay, they did it," and it would be, it would be them. So, and that's what Jim yeah, Garrison said. They killed hundreds of people around the Kennedy assassination. They said, "Why are you still alive?" And he said, "Because I stay in the sunshine." That's right. You stay out in open. I remember telling. Wait, anyway, let me back up just a moment. You're right. You know, I forget there are twenty somethings, thirty somethings, forty somethings, and even some fifty somethings. Alex, I don't even remember what the Clinton administration was about and who the players are, who they were, and who they're going to be again. I was with Bill Clinton. I was working for Mr. Jack and Witt Stevens, folks, and in Arkansas, deep south, in that period of time, they owned everything. They were, as I learned later on in life, I learned they were the titular head of the Dixie Mafia, and I was in the Mafia and didn't even know it. And was on one of the FBI said I was only one of one of very few people, if any, that ever walked out of the mob when they were in it. But I was their guy. I was their fair haired boy. Well, Mr. Witt found this guy named Bill Clinton and he said, I'm gonna make that kid governor. Go do it. I did. I went, I found out he was a pathological liar, womanizer. I mean, this guy's sick. His wife is sicker. Hillary robbed him at that time. She wouldn't even be called Clinton. And it's now come out that she's probably had more women than, than Bill. Absolutely. Do you remember when I said that years ago, everybody thought, my God, how can you do that? I can do it easy. Because I've watched her. I mean, she's ACDC. I mean, she'll do whatever she's got to do to get the power. Whatever. And whomever. So I took on the case of the Clintons, worked with him, working for the Stevens, uh, build a power system around this kid, and he wanted to be president of the United States. We all laughed in those days because of Gary Hart and others that were caught fooling around with women, and it would be impossible for Bill Clinton to pull it off. But we went ahead and developed what was called the 86 Plan. And Stay there. Larry plan. Nichols joins us. Yes, uh, the real deal, folks, in the center of the Clinton web. He knows the Hillary plan. You heard him. Race riots in America to bring in civil emergency. That's the plan, and I've never seen them geared up like this. Looks like they're getting ready to make their move. Larry Nichols, the consummate Clinton insider, joins us. And Bill Clinton has this friendly, nice guy attitude. They have this con game where they just brush everything off. The establishment protects them. Oh, Hillary's getting money from third world dictators and countries at the State Department to allow weapons to be sold to them. Totally illegal on its face, doesn't get in trouble. Bill Clinton, quote, brushes it off. Settles cases for raping women uh, in settlements, brushes it off. Feminists say it's great.
This is a short segment, long segment coming up with Larry Nichols. Jakari Jackson's here riding shotgun with us today. Pop it anytime you want, Jakari, uh, with any questions or comments for Larry Nichols. We're going to have Larry back on next week if he can do it for a full hour uh, just so we can get into the whole history of it with Hillary coming up. We already had him scheduled from last week. Uh, but in this short segment, you were getting into the beginning of it and putting Bill Clinton in there, and he wanted to be president. And then we'll finish up with that in this segment. Next segment, what Hillary will do once she gets in power. Because it's clear, it's not just trying to start a race war. They're trying to start a war with Russia. They've overthrown Ukraine. They've turned ISIS loose. Uh, they're so bold. They're so bold. It, it's like they're going for broke around the world, not just domestically, Larry Nichols. Well, Alex, just imagine this. The system we built in a third red state in Arkansas in the Deep South, we learned that if we got control of the media in Arkansas, we learned if we got control of the prosecutor, the attorney general, every prosecutor in every county, guess what? We could do anything we wanted to do. And you know what? If you got caught, so what? Nobody's going to prosecute you. That has now moved to Washington. And you're exactly right. I get so fed up with people saying, oh, this, that, and the other. Hey, this is about global power. I mean, look what they're doing. They're destroying the Middle East. I know we all say it's Obama, and it is. But remember, these people have certain goals they want, and they're going to get them. And the reason Alex, I think, can testify to it, because I told him years ago, 20-something years ago, of the goals that they were going to accomplish, and here they are. It's not an accident. It's not. Break down and some of their goals, what they want, who they work for, where they're going. Well, right now, what they want is to get absolute control of government. Because once you control government, you make the rules. <clears throat> the next thing they want to do, they want to move us <clears throat> into full war communism. I get kind of tickled. It's not funny, but here you got old Bernie Sanders, a socialist running against Hillary. Nobody will tell the truth. You got a socialist against a communist. They want us to become a communist society. Then they want to take the Middle East. Why? Because if you can destabilize the Middle East, Alex, now the Clintons knew this 20 years ago. If you can destabilize the Middle East, you know what you do? You got the keys to the world. You got the keys. And so all of this is moving that away. And Hillary, let, may I make a prediction? Number one, Jeb Bush is going to be the Republican nomination for president for the Republicans. And Hillary is going to be the next president unless, Alex, you, you, buddy, get on a bolt of lightning and somehow can get the Tea Party to rise up together and stop it. Well, that's why they're targeting the Tea Party, the Liberty Movement, with false charges set up. Stanesta Susan just got out of prison after nine that's months. Right. I mean, I mean, it really is scary, the tactics they're using. It is. And the problem is, Alex, they've got the media. They've got the money. they got all these people, Carl Rowe, Mitch McConnell, John Boehner. They've got all these people playing all these little games, acting all these good guy, bad guy things. And we don't have a gathering place. We don't have a central place to galvanize us and, and to be able to point out what's coming before it comes. What we all end up doing now, which is what I guess I'm here for, and the reason the Clintons hate me, and the reason I'm the one that the guy mentioned in his dang memoirs of all things, is because I know what's coming. I, I know because I wrote the plan. And so it's coming. And all they got to do is keep us busted up, separated, and they win, especially with guys like the Chamber of Commerce. You know, those people put 50, Alex, they put $50 million up, not to fight Democrats, to fight Tea Party candidates at every level in the RNC. Yeah, you're a better analyst than, you know, the so-called analysts they've got on Fox News. You've been there, you've seen it, and that's the thing. We've got the Republican and Democratic leadership with the wagon circled, right. uh, taking over the country and yep. literally shutting it down, trying to put us under the TPP. And now we've got Hillary racing in there to finish the job. Uh, yeah, it know, is just sick beyond belief.
Yeah, can I tell you all, Hillary, and if you get the book, you need to tell the bottle. Stay there, stay there. We're going to talk about that. Uh, uh, We're coming back in a long segment. Larry Nichols, the consummate insider. Uh, That makes me sick, physically sick. We're in trouble. I was just talking to Jakari Jackson, InfoWars Nightly News reporter, who we've had in here with his excellent breakdown of the tragic shooting, South Carolina. I don't want to say I'm freaked out. Uh, When Larry Nichols says this show is one of the only larger shows that will cover these issues, I've been physically attacked. That's one thing I don't like about the Clintons. I got physically attacked and told to shut up about Waco by five guys. Four of them attacked me, and they were paid. When the cops came, they tried to arrest me until they saw the surveillance footage, and they were told not to investigate it. Uh, I had all sorts of dirty tricks done. I had the military in plain clothes threaten me in parking lots. Uh, I had all sorts of other dirty tricks where feds would come to my book signings or and say, "Hey, let's you know bomb the police station or whatever." And I'd go outside, I'd follow them. They'd be you know in an unmarked federal police car. And that's one thing under the bushes. I kind of got left alone, even though they were involved in incredible corruption and they're tied in with the Clintons. Under the Clintons, they come after you. And I see more and more of a Clinton hand in Obama with all this persecution of conservatives, Christians, libertarians, gun owners. And it really is mafia. I mean, that's what they are. And it's Dixie Mafia meets the CIA. And what's scary is they know they're old. They've gotten to this point. This is their chance. They know where the bodies are buried. They're blackmailing people. This is their chance to move on every front. And during the break, I was telling Jakari, I was like, I can't believe as a 41-year-old person with three children that it's my responsibility to do this. But I can't just sit here while they hand us over to foreign corporations, take our guns, forcibly inoculate us, double everybody's health care prices, screw everyone, put troops on don't treat death list, stage shootings, you know, fast and furious. I, I mean, I'm not trying to just whine here. It's, I use the term epic, over the top, legendary, awesomely evil. Uh, Reverend Childress was, you know, calling it just just evil genius. I mean, it, it, it's, the thing is, they're moving on every front. They're trying to start war with Russians. They have U.S. troops battling Russians right now. That's, that's hardly ever happened. Uh, Larry Nichols, I'm ranting here, and Jakari Jackson's here with us. But I don't think I can un- overstate how perilous a uh, situation we're in. Talk about what their, what their goals were back then, where they're going now, what Hillary's going to try to do, and how racial division seems to be so central. And then, and then Jakari, jump in any time because he's going to join us again next week just on the Clintons themselves. But, but, but bringing this forward to where we are now to understand. Because am I wrong in saying they seem to be racing to finish things? Is that out of confidence or out of desperation? Not out of confidence. They've got everything the way it was set up to be. The thing that I guess you've left out of what we've talked about is I have to live every day, Alex, with the fact that I helped write and in most cases wrote most of the plan that is now destroying our country. That's a pretty awesome thing to wear on you. And that's why I've been so dedicated through all these years, no matter the beatings, getting shot at, reporters being with me, getting shot at. Yeah, you know what? You just keep going. This is going to be tough, Alex. These people play for keeps. If y'all hadn't figured it out by now, all Hillary's got to do to win this campaign is simple. Don't let anybody get in the race against her on the Democratic side. Boom, it's over. And you'll notice that Hillary is mean enough that when they go to Elizabeth Warren, I assume, or somebody else that might pose a serious challenge, they'll make an offer that they can't refuse. The mistake she made against Obama. She should have run Obama out of the race before he ever got in it and said, son, you're too young, you'll get your chance later, but you get in my way, I will destroy you and you'll never see the light of day. That's what should have been done. But Hillary has got one flaw that Bill Clinton doesn't have. She is obesely arrogant, hates me, and and she just hates doing anything except the way she wanted it. But she's not making that mistake this time. All Hillary's got to do, y'all watch, just keep anybody credible from getting in on the Democratic side against her. And she wins the race. 
All she's got to do is the other thing that we learned and we used every day, Alex. How do you win an election? Number one, you control your opposition. Hillary and her power players are controlling the RNC, and they're making sure somebody like Jeb Bush on Earth is going to be the nominee. Somebody that cannot beat them. Somebody that cannot possibly activate the conservatives in this country and get them so excited they'll come out and vote. The fix is in. The fix is in. Yep. Now, not to mention, good heavens, folks, you haven't never even seen anybody that's rigged as many voting machines as I have. You've never seen anybody on your earth that has ever had as many dead people make contributions and vote as I have. This is coming for you. This is coming for this country. This is coming, Alex, for your children. That's why, by God, you got to fight. My grandbabies, that's why I got to do what I don't want to do. I'm 65 years old. I want to sit out in a pasture somewhere and say, hey, I've been to Nicaragua, every hellhole in the world. I'm done. I'm finished. But you're not going. Folks, I know maybe y'all think this is hyper sensationalism, but you better listen to me. You're not going to have a country when this thing is done, and this thing is going to be in the next election. There won't be another election, Alex, although it'll happen. You know, hey, they got elections in Cuba, don't they? But they're not free. They're not fair. Either vote for who they say, I will kill you. That's and right. So many they... people who've lived in a quasi-free country, because nothing's perfect, cannot believe that they would actually go under tyranny. But the decision's right. been clearly made. Everything's racing towards that. Okay. And they're openly announcing, yeah, we're going to start shutting reporters down. Yeah, we're going to arrest you for your speech. Yeah. Can you imagine 20 years ago telling a reporter that's been dedicated or put in the pool reporters that they can't attend a, a, an event by a presidential nominee? Are you kidding me? No. 20 years ago, Alex, could you believe somebody could run for president of the United States? And, oh, gee, for three or four months, I'm not going to even talk, answer any questions from anyone. Are you kidding me? And they play the card that she's a woman. It, it, it's everything boiled down to identity politics. And so if you don't like her, you hate women. I mean, it That's is right. just, it is mind-blowing. Jakari Jackson, uh, any because I want Larry to continue with his breakdown of this and his warning. Well, I disagree with what Larry was saying, talking about uh, sen the uh, censorship of the reporters. You recall myself and Joe Biggs went down to the border to talk to Nancy Pelosi, even though we had already talked to her media contact. We get down there, they don't let us into the event. You oh, know, I So know. They, they do things like this all the time. Same thing when I went to right. go see Obama. He came here to the LBJ Center. And I actually had my press pass and went through all the credentials and all this stuff. I'm like, okay, so I'm ready to go. And it's like, no, you can go stand in that room over there. I was like, I don't yeah, want to no, stand no, in the room what? Obama's not in. You know, that's, that's how they do. Yeah, what I was saying was 20 years ago, could you have believed this could happen? Oh, today, trust me, it's happening. It's happening. But you yeah, got one other problem. One of the thing, key elements in our system was what we called the broken coalition. Now, there weren't enough blacks in Arkansas in that day to win an election. Today, nationally, what is 12%? In that day, being a queer was bad. There weren't that many people that came out and said they were openly gay. Then you had the women's liberals. Then you had the hippies. Then you had the yippies. All of these segments, we figured out, you know what? Yeah, there's good old hardcore conservative Christian moral people in Arkansas, and there's more of them than any one of these groups. But what if we got all those little groups together? Then we become a power source that can't be touched. And we did. And it worked. And now they have what's called the Broken Coalition, which now you have to add in what? The illegal Mexicans. So. Everything in that plan is working exactly like clockwork. And the problem is the American people, Alex, all of you, the American people that still believe that you would you still believe that America is or was or whatever, anybody still believes in America. Guys, you're going to have to suit up. You know, you're going to have to suit up. You can say, hey, I'm not going to get involved. I'm not going to do whatever. Yeah, you are. You're either going to lose it. By giving up, are you going to stand 
and you're going to stand tall, and you're going to tell the truth. Well, you that's know? the thing, is is this isn't going to be boss hog tyranny like you were involved in, just good old boy stuff. They want to break the system forever, but break then, our will, and domesticate us. This is a hardcore tyranny. And, it is. I mean, they just hate prosperity. They say we didn't build our businesses. Uh, they tell people in the third world they can't have air conditioning or cars while they're on jumbo jets. I mean, these are some yep. nasty people. Jakari Jackson... You've been working here a couple of years doing a great job. Uh, we're about to send you and whoever else you think you want to go with you uh, up to South Carolina to cover all this tragic event. Um, you talk about support. I didn't even plug anything last hour. We're going to plug right now and also plug Mr. Nichols, who's lost everything doing this. Uh, but that's why we need to get more reporters hired, too, so we have enough to always cover all these things as things heat up. Um, but, Jakari, what is it like just, just to see it all for yourself? I mean, here it is. Um, WTOC television, police say he was on Suboxone, a Schedule 3 narcotic, which is basically a antipsychotic slash amnesic mind control drug. Yeah. Um, I mean, of course we knew that was coming. It's up on Infowars.com. Um, it's just so sad because... We really are being conquered at a fundamental spiritual or, or cellular level. Uh, I feel whipped. I feel empty. I feel enslaved. And, and what's sad is I know this is just the, the, the feeling of what's coming. You know, the echo from the future. Because we're heading towards this wall. I'm yelling. I can hear the, you know, it's bouncing back like sonar. I can see what's there. I don't know what allegory. It makes me sick. And I've never felt sick talking about the New World Order. But to see it really coming into view, to see them really grabbing people's bank accounts now in Europe, getting ready for that collapse, to really see all this, Jakari, and I'm, and I'm not saying I'm a whipped person. It's the feeling of knowing that they want the power. They want to whip us. They want to dominate us and break prosperity and break goodness because they're evil. Mm -hmm. I think it's that coming up against, brushing up against evil, and it won't leave, it won't back off, it won't shut up, it's dumbing everybody down. It, it, it's, it's like being stuck in a room with somebody you hate. I think that's the best allegory, and we're going to get Mr. Nichols' take on it, but what's your take on that? Well, you know, when you see all this stuff coming down, just like Larry was talking about 20 years ago, you know, I was a, a small child, but I'm trying to get in the mindset of somebody 20 years ago. Do they really, well, of course you knew, Alex, but, you know, what's the mindset of people back then? Could they imagine something like this? You know, if you said, you know, no. 2015, we'll have all these things going on, the things with Russia, the things here domestically. And Larry, of course, says no. And it is very interesting to me the, how the whole thing is coming about and how many people are still blind to it. You know, well, exactly. They're just maneuvering right now. They're just, man 20 years ago, they were getting everything set up. You know, they got the derivatives in. They got the banking laws changed. It was all the Clintons and the globalists around them. And now he went to Bilderberg. And now Hillary's got her people at Bilderberg, nobody else. And now they're getting ready to finish us off. Uh, is that an accurate Jigari, statement, Larry? Jigari, let me say something, Jagari. Sure. 20 years ago, the average credit card debt to a household when Bill Clinton took office was around 5000 <clears throat> When he left office, the average family owed sixty something thousand dollars in credit cards, and it was built based off of a false economy system. That's what they've been building, Alex. That's what you're talking about. Everything feels like it's about to blow. We've lived off a false economy with these people being led through the nose in Jakarta. I'll tell you what it felt like 20 years ago. Alex remembers this guy, Larry Nichols, comes on this program telling what's coming, which seems so unimaginable. It sounded it like was. a poor Class B horror flick. But it was true. It was true. And now, Alex, what you're feeling is you're actually seeing that which you've known about when in your heart of hearts, because of being an American, you didn't think it could actually happen for sure. You thought, but you couldn't see it for sure. Now you're seeing it for sure, and it's like a freight train, guys, that we're standing out here on the tracks, and we're looking at each other and saying, uh, Alex... Corey, uh, me, you know, which one of us is going to stand up in this track and stop that train? Because that's 
what it is. And guys, these play people play rough. Alex is not kidding you. These people play rough, but nobody believes it. Well, ask you know, ask Vince Foster. Ask, gosh, that, anyway, fifty some odd people that I knew that I had to testify that ended up dead. No, Bill and Hillary didn't kill them. But the system that wants them in power, the mob. They act on their own. They don't need Bill and Hillary. You know, it's just like this thing with these emails. Guys, do y'all really believe that an Obama heir to Clinton Justice Department is going to investigate Hillary? You've heard that Gowdy guy say, you know, hey, I can't, from this committee, I can't go issue a subpoena. No, he can't. It's all being played. Vayner, McConnell, they're playing this like a Stradivarius. And you know that because if you are a Tea Party, you're going to ask yourself this. If you're a member of the Tea Party, you would be considered the base of the Republican Party, wouldn't you? You're exactly the kind of person that the party was built, that the, following up the moral majority. Yes. And yet the Republicans turn on them. Turn on them and commit $50 million to defeat him, not just at the presidential level, congressional level, but at the dog catcher level. They despise the Tea Party because they know the one thing that I know. The Tea Party, if it will, if it can be led, the Tea Party can take over the RNC. And if we took over the RNC, we could take back our country with a choice. But pretty soon. It's not going to be a choice. Once those Mexicans are made to be able to vote, folks, you will have seen the last national election in this country's history. Once that's done. And that's the plan. I, uh, th there's also a blindness to these corporate mafias and that they all want their interest, but then they don't yep. really think about, at least on the surface, how that connects down the road. I mean, all that money in the world and power is going to be worthless if we have nuclear war with the Russians. I mean, well, I mean, it's hardcore. I mean, yeah, you know. And, and as you think of all these CEOs, why do you think these CEOs are raping these country companies with these huge ungodly salaries and bonuses? They know that can't exist. They're getting so much money. The powerful CEOs in this country know, Alex, that this thing's going down and they're raising as much money for themselves as they can so they and their families will be safe. I got news for them. You ain't gonna, you're not going to find an island in this world that you're going to be able to buy and be safe. Not wow, let's watch. come back and hear from Larry Nichols. <laughs> I know Larry Nichols really well. He hadn't been on four or five years, but he's probably been on 20 plus times or more. Probably 30, 40 times, really. Because I was on air for most of the Clinton administration right from the start, a few years into it, and I witnessed it. And uh, I remember seeing the Clinton Chronicles right away and putting it on Access TV myself and getting threats over it. Democratic Party basically called me and said, we want to hire you to work for us. And it was like high-level people. And uh, they said, you stop talking about, about Bill Clinton. And then when I kept doing it, they started threatening me. And I was like, well, go ahead and do something. And then a month later, they came and beat me up. I mean, I fought back, but I mean, that, people don't play games. And uh, I mean, I don't want to sound dramatic here, but I mean, it was the Clintons. I mean, they, they they were telling me shut up and stop talking about Waco. And they seemed surprised that I started fighting back. Uh, and uh, that'll get you motivated when four guys are punching you. And I, I just can't believe we're in such bondage and it's all sold by trendiness and the rest of it. I want to get into what this world's going to look like if they're able to take total control as they're trying to do briefly. Larry's going to join us for like an hour and a half next Tuesday. Shikari Jackson's going to be on the news tonight covering more of this, 7 o'clock uh, with the rest of the crew. Uh, this whole race war they're trying to start. People, you notice I'm really calm right now. I've been frantically trying to stop this. Now that so much of it's going through, we're stopping some of it. I'm more just in grieving for myself and the country and all of us because we're in deep crap. I mean... <laughs> I mean, we're in the hands of some really bad people, and we've been sold out by the Republican leadership. And uh, Larry, I, I remember this, you did this years ago, and I know you don't like to push people to support you, but I know you lost everything you had doing this, and I know your book's out of print when I asked you about that. Uh, how do folks support you, or if folks want to talk to you, get you to speak to their group, or 
come on their show. I know you give out your home number and your, your address for folks, so why don't you give that out for people? Well, you bet. Look, my phone number is 440-897-0611. My address is 58 Kensington Drive, Conway, Arkansas, 72034. And Alex, I know people are going, how many people have you ever had on the show that give out their home number, their home address? Guys, under this regime, you ain't going to hide. You're not going to hide. There's no sense in it. Either we get together, either we form up, or forever set them out. Because this thing is coming down. And next week, Alex, it'll go. I'd like to talk next week about the 450 troops going to Saudi Arabia, to the Anbar province. Yeah, believe it or not, folks, that's connected to this. That's 450 people going on what they call the uh, lily pad type operation. I've been on many of them, and it's a death trap. Why? Why would you send 450 of our best into a death trap, especially when you just had the Secretary of Defense and the head of the Joint Chief of Staff yesterday in a committee and Ornero, the Marine General, they're all saying it won't work. Why? Why? All right. Well, Larry, we're going to talk to you next Tuesday. Be safe, sir. Uh, and uh, uh, I really appreciate you giving us the time today. And, of course, we're going to have you on a lot more as we enter the Clinton nightmare uh, 2.0. So thank you so much, sir. You bet. Thank you all, Alex. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Jakari, I'm going to give you overdrive for five minutes. I'm going to just leave and have you host for five minutes, give your take on everything from the heart there to the viewers. And uh, briefly, I didn't plug anything last hour. Uh, we've got the uh, liver cleanse, uh, and you can do the deep cleanse with the oxy powder and the rest of it for six days. And uh, most folks have a bunch of huge gallstones come out. It's pretty spectacular and obviously good for you. Uh, or you can just do the regular maintenance with Liver Shield. It's available at InfoWarsLife.com. And your purchase funds this operation as we go into the eye of the storm. Facing down the danger and trusting on God's providence. InfoWarsLife.com. Shakari Jackson, you are in the cockpit for five minutes. All right. When we come back, stay with us. For the Nightly News Night 7. Great job, Craig. And welcome back to the Alex Jones Show. I'm your co-host, Jakari Jackson. I'll be hosting this segment by myself talk a little bit about what we've recapped here in the last few hours I've been on air with Alex of course we know that the shooting happened in Charleston South Carolina and we have Roof the shooter and we're asking the question was he on SSRI drugs because we know with many of these mass shooters over recent history definitely in the time I've been here at InfoWars and probably before that you have innumerable amounts of these guys whether it's Adam Lanza the shooting at Fort Hood any other place where these guys, they're taking these SSRIs, and it you know gives them these uh, very, or I guess maybe inhibits them in some certain certain ways, and does not allow them to feel the things they need to feel, the empathy that they need to feel to actually be a human being. And if you guys can hear these things yourself, you turn on the TV, you're watching these pharmaceutical commercials. They say stop taking this drug immediately if you have thoughts of suicide, if you have ambitions to hurt other people. But yet we continue to to uh, prescribe these things. To people on the street, people in the military, and not, you know, knocking the military at all. It's just what they're giving these guys. And instead of giving them the counseling and things that they need, they say, go take this pill, go you know, talk to this doctor. So even if you don't kill anybody, we can take all your guns away. But let's talk more about Mr. Roof. Well, once again, I should not call him Roof, but he goes into a church in Charleston, South Carolina. A congregation is meeting, a very small group. He goes there, he sits there for about an hour, he's listening to the message, and, you know, he's saying his prayers. And he decides to pull out a 45 caliber pistol. Reports are saying that he got it from his father for a birthday present. And opens fire and kills many of the people in there, nine people. One person was allowed to tell the tale and another small little girl. She survived by playing dead. And it's a very cold, very calloused way to go about it. I mean, it's, you know, if he would have drove by in a drive-by shooting and shot, that'd been bad enough. But to go and meet with people, you know, maybe somebody shook his hand, you know, hey, you know, why don't you come back, you know, Sunday or, or whenever the uh, church service is, and we can talk more about it. But he sits there and he decides to shoot the people in the building. Now, as we were talking about with Reverend Childress a little bit earlier today, you know, the timing of this, you know, Juneteenth, you know, it's a very big thing in the black community. They get together in, in June 
And a lot of people can be talking about this, obviously. And, you know, I'm not saying the guy was you know, meeting with the feds or anything like that. But, you know, he may have been meeting with some white supremacists that said, well, hey, if you have ambitions to go kill somebody, why don't you just wait and do it this weekend? You know, it's going to be a huge story. I mean, it would have been a huge story anyway. But now you have many people who are going to gather around, families, friends, and they're going to talk about this. You know, what else can be said? I'm not exactly sure. I'm sure many people would tell their churches, their congregations, you know, hey, let's try to find the most peaceful solution to this possible. But you also have the people say, well, let's go out there and, you know, maybe have some type of retribution. And going out and attacking people randomly, as this guy did, is not going to be the answer. You know, of course, this guy needs to be held accountable. And I'm sure since they've caught him, they have him in some type of segregation. Uh, back when I used to work in jail, we had the medical facility. And that's where most of your high risk inmates were. You know, guys that they pretty much are convinced that they put them in general population, they could be injured or not murdered. So they put them in a medical facility where you have a lot of staff and you have very few inmates to contend with. So it'll probably stay there until they find out exactly what's going on with him. And also, I'll briefly touch on the time we have uh, Hillary Clinton. And as uh, our last guest was speaking about all the things going on in the Clinton presidency and even in the Clinton governorship, because he was hitting on a lot of things that I didn't know about, because I know about Bill Clinton and Hillary Clinton now, but their days prior to before I, Bill became the governor, that's you know new information to me. And one of the questions I hope we get a chance to talk about when he comes on the show next week and when he talks to Alex is the cocaine that came into Mena, Arkansas. Because we always hear it's a conspiracy theory that the government has been involved in bringing cocaine into this country. And briefly, as we wrap up, go watch the 60 Minutes interview with Mike Wallace where he's talking to the head of the DEA. And he says, hey, you're telling me that the CIA brought cocaine into this country. The DEA guy said, yes, I, I don't know any other way to explain it to you. So stay tuned. Nightly news coming up 7 p.m. Central. Darren McBring bringing you the latest. So stay tuned to that and more reports, Infowars.com. <laughs>